and we are live g'day crypto goers i'm adam stokes welcome back to the channel for the crypto sunday summary this being the 8th of october 2023 where as always a free and easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button subscribing if you're new ensuring you also not so you never miss a new episode also watch out for the bots in the comments below i will never ever ask you to contact me via telegram or whatsapp they are scammers please stay away a very special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Malcolm from justwheeliebins.com.au, Michael Dunford of Monash Glass, Lee Perry, Darren Carter from Endura Flooring Extra, Gary from the Hive Cardano Stake Pool, Carly McEwen from Carly McEwen Coaching, and Luke Brody Express Enclosed Car Transport. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I very much appreciate your support. Uh, fun fact, I did my first Patreon withdrawal the other day. Um, so all, all this support that you've been giving me uh, when i actually took it out uh it was good uh, thank you i'm very grateful it wasn't heaps but it was certainly enough to um what did i do with it I, I think i did something around the garden with it so thank you um when my gardens are looking good it's because of you my patreon supporters that combined with the hard labor as we can see bitcoin's just gone into the gray ethereum in the red xrp in the red there's not much movement across the board Bitcoin currently at 27,922, Ethereum at 1628, bouncing around, just gone down a little bit. It's making my face go red as it goes into the red. But let's get over to you, my crypto brothers and sisters. But before we do, I'll bring up the crypto bubbles for a little bit of a background effect there. It's good fun to watch that. Let's look at the daily bubbles where we can see Trust Wallet is, from what we can see, the biggest gainer over just today, up 9.3%. Let's go over to you, my crypto brothers and sisters, where we've got Mr. Crypto at JSY. He says, LFG, Pulse Chain ecosystem popping off. I have to look into it. Big Bear's Flight, great to have you here. He says, hi all, hope you had a great weekend. Savor every day. Yes, uh, thank you for your messages with respect to what's happening over in Israel. Uh, it's bad. It's real bad. Ronnie, he says, Mr. President is in the building. Good to have you here, Ronnie. And Big Bear's Flies. Adam, you need to have Gary up there as well. Going to the mood going to the mood of the u.s congress his days are also numbers yeah looking at the mood of the u.s congress i think old gensler uh yeah he could be on my next thumbnail where his days are over but again as we've always asked on this channel if gary gensler was replaced as the head of the sec would the narrative of the sec change or would it just be the same don't know don't know i'm guessing someone's going to give me a five by five ramsey good on you ramsey didn't even have to ask thank you so much you know i need it though jay says g'day folks uh, Big Bear Fly, Big Bear Flight saying good day to Ronnie. Uh, Big Bear Flight and Ronnie having conversation. That's what I like to hear. Steve, Steve J. He says evening Stokesy and fellow fellow Stokesicans. Great to have you here, Steve J. Steve, where are you? Gallivanting around the world. Neil Dennison, evening all. Paul Young, well, well, well. <laughs> uh, Craig Patton, good day, Craig. Good to see you, mate. He says good day all. Jason Friskin, top of the evening to everyone. Great that we have some community here. Steve J says, new tensions are good for the bond market. Money will flow back into safety of bonds, bringing yields down, thus being stock market and crypto positive. Yes. Um, and in fact, you could see the markets go slightly green when tensions kicked off overseas. Wonder Woman says, evening Stokesicans. Wonder Woman says, you're not wrong, uh, Big Bear's flight, uh, saying that Big Bear's flight was saying, hey, Wonder Woman, work done for the day, I guess. Yep, work's done. Now we can sit back with Uncle Adam. Ramsey says, hi, Adam. G'day. John Midas, you're normally the first one to comment. Where, where have you been? He says, greetings, Adam. Love your honesty, heartfelt sharing. Thank you, Johnny. Great to have you here. Sorry I didn't catch you in America. Crypto Boy says, hi, Adam. Now that Earn is gone on CoinSpot, are there any suggestions where we can earn? Great question. So CoinSpot has stopped the Earn function. And it really hurt. Like, story time with Uncle Adam. I set up all my earn on CoinSpot ages ago. Remember, it used to be staking. Then they had to change the word from stake to earn for, for no other reason than tax compliance reasons. But language is very powerful. And I spoke to CoinSpot and I said, why did you change it from yield, uh, sorry, a staking to earn? And they said, it's because of tax. They, they just like that word more. And you can actually see, as a matter of fact, when they changed it from staking to earn, nothing actually happened except the word changed. Okay. With so much uncertainty with what's happening in the crypto space with respect to everyone being attacked left, right, and center from the SEC, ASIC is taking on, who did ASIC take on? So be, begins with BIT. ASIC is taking on a company in Australia that begins with BIT. I keep saying it. If it's not Bitcoin and it starts with BIT, you're destined for failure. You're destined for trouble. 
prove me wrong. I, I should make a website that says all the bits that have failed. Um, but in any case, because CoinSpot, along with all crypto platforms, were carrying, coming under attack from the ATO, ASIC, every type of financial regulation, banks indirectly, uh, with on and off ramps, they just they wound it back and they just said, stop for now. Okay, so what does that mean? How do we earn? I don't know if you can hear Doby going off in the background. I don't know what it is. She's quiet all day. And the second I start recording, <laughs> she goes out the back and starts. It's too late to be yelling at possums. I don't know what she's barking at. Hopefully everything's okay in the estate. But now that they've wound back the earn function, you've really got to go to the source itself. So with Cardano, Cardano, I was earning, I was earning a lot of money every day, every day, and I was compounding it. And it's only recently I went back and looked at my Cardano transactions. And boy, was I making a lot of money off Cardano. And you know how we're talking about how do you make $20 a day? That there's a lot of way to make a lot of ways to make $20 a day. But if you've got a good bundle of coins or money, you put it into a bank and you earn interest. If you put it into crypto, you earn staking rewards. But when it comes to what you do now to answer your question, hang on, I've got to get Doby. Sorry, bear with me. Ugh, that's two weeks in a row. Apologies, my crypto brothers and sisters. Which is too loud. Dobermans. Nice and cool and chill, but when they go off, don't mess with Dobermans. But when you're the master, make sure you're in charge of Dobermans. <laughs> okay. So to answer your question, Crypto Boy, what you do now with your staking rewards is you have to basically, you got to go to the source. So with Cardano, you go to a Uroi wallet as an example. With hex which you couldn't get on coin spot you know you, you stake it on the site with all of these platforms now you actually got to go to your own staking pools ethereum as well you could join a staking pool that isn't on an exchange the same thing happened with Bi you could stake on binance but the problem with binance is that's under a lot of attack as well and they in many it depends where you are with binance it depends on what country you're in with binance how are you actually going to get those staking rewards so it's tragic that they've taken them away I understand why they've taken them away. Hopefully when we get more stability in the markets, not through price of the stability of the markets, but through regulation and confidence with us being able to use this stuff, they will bring back that function because it was a fantastic function within CoinSpot. You could just set it, restake all your earnings and forget it. And it was great, set and forget. Um, but now you've got to go directly to the source, which means instead of having all your coins on one exchange, which you shouldn't do anyway, but instead of having a big portion of your coins on one exchange and just setting them all to stake, you've got to move those coins to all of these individual platforms, all of these different staking pools to earn those staking rewards. And it just becomes an accounting nightmare as well. Of course, you have platforms such as Coinly. Got to be honest, I've lost a lot of faith in Coinly. Um, I'll explain later, but you might like to look at Coin Tracker or doing manual line by line tracking. Coinly still works. I'm just not impressed with the company that's a personal thing, but ultimately you've got to move your coins to where you can actually stake them yourself. Uh, Mr. Crypto JSY says we need to end the constant wars. Yeah. The wars never end. Mind you, it's much quieter now that Dobie's not going off. Johnny, John, Johnny, John says, hello, Adam and the crypto family. Count of Marcy says when, when two tribes go to war. Yeah. Uh, we see friction in the crypto land, nothing like we're seeing overseas, but why can't we all just get along? That's what my dad used to always say. He goes, why can't we all just get along? At, at the micro or the macro he's referring to. Um, Craig Patton says, who is next to SBF in the thumbnail? That's Alex Mashensky, the founder of Celsius. So we'll talk about him a bit later. Ram says, no problems, Adam. Glad I could catch you live. John, John, Johnny, John says, CoinSpot also stopped poly payments. Oh, is that true? Are you sure? I know they stopped on one of a few banks, but did they do it on poly? It's not that CoinSpot stopped poly payments. And so everyone else stopped it happening around them. It just makes the on and off ramp. All it is, my crypto brothers and sisters, it's the big players, and we all knew this was going to happen. 
whether it's the government or the banks or PayPal to an extent, because now that they're in the crypto land and they want your money to buy and sell their crypto, they're just stopping the on and off ramps. They're slowing everything down. They're, they're just retarding this space. And it's because, well, you've got to protect us from scams. Oh, really? Well, why don't you protect us from the scam of university? Why don't you protect us from the scam of the media? Why don't you protect us, protect us from the scam of fiat? Why don't you protect us from the scam of casinos? Oh, no, that's all a free choice. Okay, but what about crypto? Oh, no, we've got to stop that scam. The scam is the regulators themselves because they don't stop the scams of fraudulent companies and casinos and universities. And I, I really mean it. University is a scam. Unless you're doing STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths, it's just a business. You should see how much money is in universities. So much money. And the customer can't default. Why can't the customer default? Because the customer gets a loan from the government through a hex or help debt. I'm talking in Australia in particular here. That money automatically goes from the government to the university. So they've kind of been paid in advance. And they can never default. The student can never default because the debt has already been paid by the government and the government will always get it off the student, whether or not they pass university or not. So there are many scams out there, but the only one they seem to focus on is the one that competes with the scam itself. And that is the scam of whoever's in charge. And Wonder Woman says, Dobie just wants dad's attention. Bring her on the live. <laughs> I've brought her in before, but when she comes in, she jumps all over me. She's a cool dog. She's a really cool dog. But as I said, I, I don't know what it is. As soon as I start recording, she starts barking. <laughs> it's insanity. Um, Jay, depending on your risk tolerance, yeah, you can stake via Trust Wallet, DEXs, or other types of wallets. Yeah, and, and you know what? Here you go. Trust Wallet here, as we can see in the crypto bubbles. There you go there. But but what's the danger, kids? As soon as you put your money on these on Trust Wallet or others, it, it's not your coins anymore. And if you asked Richard Hart, he'd say, well, why are you picking up pennies in front of freight trains? But you, there's ways around it, like with, um, you know, your Roy, as an example, on Cardano. They're still your coins. And if you set up your own Ethereum stake pool, they're still your coins. And if you're staking Hex, they're still your coins. So there are ways around it. It's just that the convenience of putting it on an exchange that did it for you, that seems to be fading away. Uh, Crypto Belt Boy saying hi to Big Bear's Flight. It's popular, old Big Bear's Flight. Um, IB19 says hi, guys and gals. Steve J says keep an eye on that US debt clock funding wars will not be cheap. Yeah, nor will the price of crude. Yeah, that debt clock. Let's let's bring up the debt clock. US debt clock. It must be 33 trillion by now. Here we go. Strap yourself in, kids. And don't worry, we're not having to go out of America. We're all facing this debt. What's the debt? Drum roll. There you go. Oh, my God. 33.5 trillion. Just a few weeks ago, we're talking it was under 33 trillion, and you're now at 33.5. We're now closer to 34 than we were to 33 within weeks. That's a huge amount of money. And what's the plan? They've updated this site. Look, if they put all these little logos here now. Hang on. I'll just get rid of Steve J's comment so you can see it a bit better. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Look at the... um. The defense one here they've got a picture of an a10 how ironic that they put the picture of an a10 an air force close troop combat support aircraft they've just retired that aircraft tragic tragic top aircraft but it served its time and it's, it's now being retired um go back to your comments count of marcy he says the old world order like gold and the New world order like crypto and fiat is toilet paper. Yep. Jason Frisket, he says, just seen a video on Malcolm Roberts in Parliament saying that there is plenty of undeniable proof COVID was a military operation between the Five Eyes nations. Look, all I know, well, hang on, I don't know this. I know I don't know, but I hope that we do know in years to come what actually happened. Whether it was a conspiracy or not, I hope just the truth comes out so we can all just agree, oh, that's what happened, or it was the truth, or it wasn't the truth. I'd love to see um, what happens. John, John, Johnny, John says, same here regarding Coinly, Adam. I've had a stack of issues with sink sinking wallets accurately. May as well have done the calculations myself without them taking responsibility. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. So I've had great success with Coinly, but as I said, I, I've had I've, I've lost confidence in them. And when I used them, I loved them. When I interviewed the founder, I loved what he was saying. I've loved the product, but things are always changing and things are moving so quickly. 
And ultimately, I've lost confidence in Coinly. And I think it's fair to say that I'm, I'm going to take Coinly off the crypto.land because it's still there. I still trust it. I've just lost faith in it. I know that's kind of a play of words there. So um, going over to the crypto.land, you can see Coinly's down here. But when you use this, um, it's a guaranteed link to go to Coinly. And you're not giving away your private keys. So there's no there's no security breaches or anything like that. We're talking about the pure product of doing your crypto taxes. Uh, I've just lost confidence in them. And I, I think I'll be, I'm, I will be taking them down. The, the thing is, I we need a crypto coin tracking or tax solution. And what are the options? You've got Coinly and Coin Tracker. Well, I can't endorse Coin Tracker because they won't talk to me. And if they're not going to talk to me, how can I be sure they're going to talk to you? They won't talk to me as a customer and they won't talk to me as a YouTuber. So how on earth can I endorse that? Whoever's out there, if you can make a product that is reliable and easy to sync and trustworthy, you'll be very rich because everyone's in the same boat when it comes to doing your taxes for crypto. Neil Dennison says, thing is we generally do a lot. Thing is we generally do all get along once you take governments and their banking masters out of the equation. Yeah, here's, here's a fun fact. The biggest killer of human beings on the planet are governments. I, I know that might sound like a big call, but d do the numbers yourself. It's not pandemics. It's not um, murder amongst ourselves. Probably, I probably got a strike for that. You can't, I can't even say that word on YouTube. Sorry, YouTube algorithm gods. Don't please forgive me. Um, it, it's not car accidents. It's not starvation. It, it's governments. It's governments sending thousands and thousands of millions of men off to war to be sacrificed in the name of a flag or something. It, it's tragic. Uh, Blasphemous Libel says, my only minor complaint with CoinSpot Earn is the staking. Is the staking, I think you meant in the staking, is re is recorded daily in your accounts, ends up being a huge amount of transactions, uh, took track, I think you mean to track through your crypto ca tax calculator. Look, Blasphemous Libel, the reason why they re record it daily, I understand what you mean. If you go and look at your wallet of what, your crypto earnings that you've staked, there's one for every single day, but they have to show you that because they pay you every single day. So, so the good news is, I go into what you're saying, it's a pain to track it because there's all these account entries essentially, but those account entries have to be there because they're paying you every day. And if you notice, they're paying you in the value of the crypto of at that time, which does make the accounting easier. Because remember, I'm not allowed to tell you this because I'm not a financial advisor or a tax accountant, but I can tell you what I've been doing for years, what the tax law says and what my accountant tells me and what is a matter of fact, but do your own research. You have to pay tax on what the crypto was worth at the time it was given to you. And what CoinSpot was doing was, was doing exactly that. It was saying, you've been paid this much crypto on this day and that's how much it was worth on that day. So that was very good for accounting because if they didn't do that, then you would have to convert what was this coin at this time on that day in Australian dollars and record that? And that would be a nightmare. It had to be recorded daily. Steve J says the narrative to get retail out. The narrative is to get retail out. Don't sell BTC to the 1%. That's right. Do not sell your Bitcoin. Steve J, the scam. Snoop Dougie Doug is in the house. Yo, yo, he's back. Snoop, it's so good to have you back. The, it hasn't been the same without you, my crypto brother. I, we, I read your comment that someone got into your email account. It's good to see you back. Hopefully everything's okay. Okay. So, uh, Ronnie says, how badly did Gary Guzzler get smashed by Congress the other day? Yep. Uh, it, it's conflict within the United States. It's good though. It's good that the, the United States has free speech as Australia should as well, as most democratic nations or republics should have, where you can question those who are making decisions. And you can see in Congress, the head of the SEC was getting smashed by all these other congressmen. And it's fantastic. Now, will anything happen? That's the real test. Or is it just words? Is it all just smoke and mirrors where it's like, yeah, we tried to hold you to account. Ida says, hi, Uncle Adam. Hi, Ida. Great to have you here, my crypto sister. Uh, Count of Marzi, one day they just won't pay that debt. Yeah, they're not going to pay the debt. So we're talking about the US debt, 33.513 trillion, not million, not billion, trillion dollars. And it just keeps going up. And, and there is no plan. Uh, prove me wrong. Uh, American brothers and sisters, prove me wrong. Is there a plan to pay this debt off? Or is the plan to increase the debt ceiling? It, it's the latter. The, the plan is 
How do we get more debt? How do we print more money? How do we sell more bonds? How do we get rid of more US treasuries? How do we get more stuff for free? I'm not saying America doesn't produce value. I'm saying that there is zero plan to reduce the debt. Left or right doesn't, I'm not talking about Biden or Trump and Trump did it. No, they both do it. They both are addicted to free money. How do we get free money? Print. What should we do now? Print. Well, now what do we do? How about we print? Okay, well, what now? Let's print. When does it stop? When does it stop? It's scary stuff. Cal says, good evening. Dre says, hey, all just got here. What happened to Coinly? Um, I've just, I've lost confidence in them keeping their word. Uh, my brand is about trust. We've got enough scams. I'm not saying Coinly is a scam, but we've got enough scams and misleading and confusion, confusion and dangers in the world without without us having to pay for another one. Again, I'm not saying Coinly is doing anything wrong. I'm just saying I don't tr I don't have faith in them anymore. I still trust their product for what it can do. They're not going to get your private keys. You're never giving away your private keys, so you don't have to worry about scams. You don't have to worry about it being hacked. Well, hang on. Could it be hacked? I don't know. <laughs> anything that's centralized could be hacked. Maybe there could be a KYC hack, but there's, there is no indication that your coins are at danger because you've never given away your private key. All they're doing is read only. And remember, everyone can read only because it's blockchain. But I just can't really, I can't endorse them anymore. Julie, hello, Julie. She said, hello, everyone. Ramsey says, crypto tax calculator. Yeah, make a crypto tax calculator. Figure out how to do that and you'll be rich. Okay, let's get into the fear and greed index. We're at 50. <laughs> the market is not doing anything. So we're at neutral. Yesterday, we're at 49 neutral. Last week, we we're at 48 neutral. And last month, we we're just into the fear at 46. The market doesn't know which way to go. Now, I guess that's kind of good in the sense that it's not good or it's not bad, but it's kind of boring. You know, we there's this great meme where there's someone uh, like a really bad image, a bad photo, no, a bad drawing of a, I don't know, a guy with a stick poking Bitcoin. And he's like, come on, do something. And, and that's, I always think about it whenever Bitcoin's doing nothing. I always think of that meme. It's like, do something. But it's okay. Like, we're so weird. Think about it. When it's pumping, everyone's like, oh, it's a bubble. It's going to pop. When it's dumping, it's like, oh, I told you it's a scam. When it's pumping or dumping quickly, you know, going up and down, it's like, oh, it's too volatile. It's dangerous. But now when it's doing what we actually want money to do and just be stable, it's like, oh, well, it's boring. So we just can't seem to be satisfied. And don't worry, I'm guilty of it as well. But I'm actually quite comfortable with what's happening at the moment as we look at the Bitcoin TA. So you're currently looking at Bitcoin to US dollars in daily candles. And I'll just get rid of some of these comments here. Okay, so the blue channel here, that's what I drew in last week. And we had that breakout where we broke out from that channel. And, and what's good is now we're tracking above the channel of the past. So that's the only good, well, there's lots of good news I can give you, but I'll just draw up a parallel channel here. So we had this long channel tracking for the last few weeks. Then we broke out. Can anyone remember what this big green candle was? What was that big green candle? What happened there, kids? Can you remember? It was about this time last week. And now we're tracking in a new channel. We've got the 50-day moving average that's got this beautiful upwards trend here. So here's your 50-day moving. I'll just get rid of this line here. because Hang on, I'll extend that line here. So the white line we're looking at the moment. You can see this sharp uptrend here. The 200-day moving average is only just tracking up. But of course, we're still under a death cross. We'd love to see this white line go above the orange line. But if I extend this trend line that I drew last week, do you remember I said there's a bit of a trend forming? Well, one point, two points, and you can argue that's three points. I'm just dropping below. I haven't touched that point yet. So there's a bit of a gap between there. Maybe I'm going to be cheeky here and maybe you go from a body to a wick. Now nah, that's cheating. We haven't got confirmation of the trend yet. I, I'm not in, in my TA analysis. We've only got two points of the trend tracking up. We do have it tracking sideways above the old parallel ch channel. But I, I want to see what I really want to see for confirmation. I want to see. I want to see it touch this trend line up here or go much higher, which because then I could draw a trend line like that. So once, because then I could go from one point 
to the bottom of this candle, two points, to hopefully if it touches here. Others will do different uh, tra um, trend lines here because you could change the scale, but because we keep it consistent on this channel of doing daily candles, you need consistency as a baseline to see where we're going. If you don't do that, you're going to get yourself in trouble and say, well, where are we, where are we actually? Uh, especially a special shout out for my hexagons and pulsicons. Finbear, where are you? Haven't seen you in the comments yet. Pulse is down 5% over the last week. A correction over the last day. So 4.55% pulse is down. You're at 0.45 of sacrifice, not accounting for any uh, getting in early and multiplier bonuses. PLSX is at a tenth of sacrifice. That's down 5%. And hex, the combined price, is one cent. Hex is actually, out of all of them combined, so E hex and P hex, so we're clear here, it's also quite stable. It's not more stable than Bitcoin. It's actually tracking the same as Bitcoin. And I only say that because if you recall, for a long time, hex was doing what Bitcoin wasn't. And that was cool. It was kind of hedging against hex, uh, Bitcoin. Hex and Bitcoin were doing different things. But now we kind of have the everything tracking sideways bubble, including HEX itself, the combined price, so not E and not P, but E and P together. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are like, what the hell is E and P? One is on the Ethereum chain. One is on the Pulse chain. And the combined price is 1.14 cents. Over to the crypto rankings. We've got a lot to get through tonight. I'm doing my best to speak very quickly as well, because I know that a lot of you think I'm drunk when I'm speaking on not 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, or two times speed. Let me have a sip of my Barocca. Okay, over to the rankings. Let me refresh just in case. We have the bit fat, big fat orange man, Bitcoin at one, Ethereum two, Tether three. BNB will not budge from four. Very impressive. We then have XRP at five. Fun fact. I believe last year, I'm going off the top of my head now, the most traded coin in the United States, not the world, in the United States, was XRP. What was the other one? Was it Litecoin? Uh, and um, Solana? And um, Shiba Inu? XRP, I think it was Solana, and Shiba Inu. They were some of the top traded coins in the United States, not the world, in the United States over the last year. Random fact. You then have USDC at six, Lido Staked Ether or Steth, ST ETH at seven, Solana at eight. Wow. Solana's, for all the crap we give Solana, it's back in position eight. Unbelievable. In, in crypto, anything can happen. Never forget that. If there's only one thing you remember from Uncle Adam, remember that saying, in crypto, anything can happen, because it's absolutely true. In crypto, anything can happen. You then have Cardano at 9, Dogecoin at 10, Tron the old Tron at 11. That's also amazing. Tron's like one of the OGs. It went all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Now it's in top 11. Unbelievable. Toncoin 12, Polygon Matic 13, Polkadot at 14, my old friend Litecoin at 15, Ramp Bitcoin at 16. Just on Litecoin, I saw some random, you know, you get random videos every now and then. There's some big dude overweight dude who said, these are the worst coins that you can possibly hold. <laughs> and he put Litecoin on there. And I'm like, why Litecoin? Like th there's 22,000 different coins out there. And he said, of the top, of all the coins out there, these are the five worst coins that you can hold. And I'm like, why would you say Litecoin is one of the worst co coins to hold? It's been around for ages. It uses almost, well, it uses a quarter of the energy of Bitcoin. People use it for exchanging goods and services because it's very low friction when you're doing transactions for it. it it's got a great burn, fun, well, hang on, halving function, not burn function, halving function, just like Bitcoin does. A total supply of 84 million with a halving every four years, just like, I think it's four years, I'm pretty sure it is, every four years, just like Litecoin. And it's just proven itself. It doesn't pretend to do anything fancy and you can have layer two solu solutions on it. And it just made me think, as I've told you before, get your data diet. Whatever I say, try and find the opposite. And certainly when you see some random fat dude, I'm sorry, on the internet goes, one, one of the worst coins you can hold out of the 22,000 out there is Litecoin. Man, come on. Wrap Bitcoin 16, Bitcoin Cash at 17, Chainlink at 18. Watch Chainlink. I keep saying it. Watch Chainlink. 
You want a dark horse for the week? It's Chainlink. I think I've already done that for the last few weeks. Chainlink and Polygonmatic, look into it. The way it integrates with the Ethereum ecosystem and the amount of stuff that's built on top of Ethereum, they are coins to look at. Die 20, Avalanche 21, Leo Token 22, True USD at 23, Uniswap at 24, Stella XLM, the cousin to XRP at 25, XMR, Monero, the true privacy coin at 26, OKB at 27, Ethereum Classic still at 28. Ethereum Classic's been floating around in those top 20, five, six, seven, eight positions for a long time. You then have BUSD, a Binance USD stablecoin at 29, Cosmos Hub Atom at 30, Hedera HBAR 31, Filecoin 32, Lido Dow at 33, Internet Computer ICP at 34, Kronos CRO at 35, Quant QNT at 36, Maker 37, and Aptos APT at 38, VChain at 39. I bought some more VChain the other day. Not much, but I bought some. They're at 39, and Mantle MNT at 40. Over to the biggest gainers and losers over the week that was. And the biggest gainer is Trust Wallet. Um, let me do more research. Trust Wallet's been around for a while. The only the only thing I give you a warning about Trust Wallet, the product is fine to date. But where people have been burnt with Trust Wallet is that they've gone on the App Store. So they've gone on to, you know, the Apple Store or the uh, Android Store. Man, English is fun tonight. And they've downloaded a Trust Wallet. So Google Play or iTunes or what is it, an Apple? I should know I've got an Apple. Bloody hate it. <laughs> let me let me just get distracted here. I've got an Apple iPhone. I've used Droids, Androids for ages. I still prefer the Androids when the for the operating system and transferring files and the control I have over my own file phone. Android definitely hands down better. But what can't be denied with Apple, their cameras are way better. I've been taking photos. For years and even before, I reckon I invented the selfie because I I can remember the old wind up. You know, remember disposable cameras, kids? Remember disposable cameras? I used to always patrol as a soldier with a disposable camera. And the amount of selfies I took with a disposable camera, and you got no screen to make sure you're actually in shot. You literally just wind this camera up and hold it out in front of you with your mates and go smile and go click. And all those mates give me shit, like saying, oh, are you getting all these photos? Who cares about the photos? And then years later, they're like, hey, Stokesy, you know all those photos you took? And I'm like, oh, now you want to see them. Now you want to see them. Anyway, super distracted here. iPhone has, without a doubt, better cameras. No question. And they also have better batteries. I, I can go with my, I just remember with my Android, I was always charging, every night you had to charge it. But with my Apple, I can get away with charging it like every second night. And that's a huge difference. Whenever I was going overseas with my Android, I always had to have battery packs with me. I don't even bother having battery packs with me, with my Apple. Um, so anyway, that was a long way of saying, with Trust Wallet, <laughs> we go from Trust Wallet to Adam taking selfies as a soldier with a wind-up camera, only on this, on this channel, only in the Crypto Sunday summary. Don't download a dodgy wallet. And you're going to say, well, which, one's, which one do I download? I don't know. I, I haven't got a Trust Wallet. But I do know heaps of people have been destroyed from downloading the wrong trust wallet. You know what I should do? I should find the right trust wallet and put it on the crypto.land. That's what I should do. In fact, that'll be my homework. I will find the right trust wallet and I will put it on the crypto.land so you can make that decision. It's not that I'm endorsing trust wallet. It's just that it has been around for a while. And as one of you mentioned, you can get your staking rewards from it. And it is very convenient. And it's the biggest gainer over the last seven days. You then have tokenized exchange up 18.6, render up 16.9, Rollbit, you're up 15%, and Bitcoin SV, God again, up 11.4, Solana up 9.5, Avalanche up 8, Monero, bit of a comeback, up 5.3, Polygon Matic up 4.8, Leo Token up 4.6, Stacks up 3.7, DYDX up 3.2, Wrap Bitcoin up 3, Bitcoin up 3, good on you, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's in the biggest gainers. Go, Bitcoin. Clay's up 2.9, Filecoin up 1.4, Casper up 0.8, and IOTA with a, co a code apparently of IOTA. Hang on, that's a change, kids. Look at this. Who can tell me? IOTA, what is the ticker? What should be the ticker for IOTA? So here it's saying IOTA and the ticker is IOTA. But if you recall, it used to be something else. 
Let's look in the comments below. Hang on, just star where I am. Who can get it? Who's the winner there? Who's the winner that knows what IOTA's ticker used to be? You start to see these things change. XRP is up 0.7%. Min is up 0.7. Bit get token, you're up 0.7. White bit up 0.3. And Cardano up 0.1. Well done. Then you're into the stable coins. Have we got, uh, who was it? No one has guessed what it was. It was Myota. There's a fun fact for you. It was the only ticker I knew that was longer than the name of the coin itself. Now, someone has just asked, uh, yeah, you got it, Carlos Shebibi. Well done. And V got it as well, Myota, acknowledging the lag. I, I think there's a 15-second delay between what I'm saying and what you're typing. Uh, Wade says, why? Uh, don't know why XYO wasn't in the biggest gainers. I'll tell you why, because remember, no one set of data is the truth. So in the past, if you recall, I used to have CoinGecko and Nomics, but then Nomics collapse, um, collapsed. And now I could go to CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap, but some of the information on CoinMarketCap is, can't be trusted. The truth is no data can be trusted. Don't get one single source of data whether it's a crypto ranking, whether it's a guy talking in front of a microphone and a camera on YouTube, whether it's the media, whether it's your mum and your dad and your friends, there's no single source of truth. Look for the diamond of truth. His side, her side, the interpretation of what actually happened. And the same is what's happening here in the crypto land. So your question, Wade, is fair. Um, but the answer is unfair. That is, <laughs> there's no single source of truth. Biggest losers, Radix again. Another big hit, XRD down 15.6%, ApeCoin down 11.4%, ThorChain, you're down 10.8%, make it down 10.3%, GMX, not a surprise, remember GMX was the biggest gainer, was it last week, up a, I think it was up 100%, you're down 9.9%, .9, so that's that's actually quite a natural or healthy pullback, Curve Dow down 9.8%, not 98%, just on GMX, I, I think it was up 100%. I'm not telling you what to do with your money and I'm not telling you how to swing trade. I'm just saying that if you see a coin go up 100% one week and you are a swing trader and you can afford to lose money, but you want to make money and you have a risk, sorry, an appetite for risk. One of the easiest ways to swing trade a coin, not financial advice, all investments come with risk, but one of the easiest ways to swing trade a coin is look at what was the biggest gain in the last week or this week. And there's like, I'd have to do the numbers, but from my experience, there's like an 80% chance it's going to be the biggest loser next week. So let's do a little experiment now. And here's one, GMX is an example. I, I, think, it, I think it was last week. It was the biggest gainer up 100% from memory. And then it went down 9.9%. .9%. This week, the biggest gainer is Trust Wallet, 26.6%. There is, and I'm making up the numbers here. I'm just going off the top of my head. I could do an analysis and figure out what the exact number is. But just pulling numbers out of my head from experience, there's probably an 80% chance that that will dip next week. Not be the biggest loser, but go down. Now, of course, sometimes coins can run away. So you've got to be careful, particularly in a bull market. Everything keeps going up. The biggest gainer just keeps going up and up and up and up in a bull market. But at the moment, th this is the beauty right now of having a market that is, is flat. So we, we can see the fear and greed index, we're at 50. You can see the TA of the majority of the market is just tracking sideways. Where this is a good game for those who are swing traders, which most of you are not. So just listen to what I'm saying, but don't do what I'm saying because you, you'll you get burnt. But for the swing traders out there, many of you are nodding your head right now and it's like, yep, he's right. When the market is flat and a coin is the biggest gainer one week, there's about an 80% chance, possibly more, that it's going to it's gonna pull back the next week. So you short that coin. That's where you short it. You say, right, I'm going to short this thing, put a little bit of leverage on it, and just make free money. And that's why a stable market, when this is happening, is, is a lot of fun and, and pretty easy. And it also applies to the traditional markets. When a big stock goes up 1%, you might say, well, 1%, that's not much. Yeah, that's a lot in the traditional markets. In a week, that's a big move in, in one week. There's a pretty good chance it's going to pull back a few points. So you short the position and then you put leverage on it and you have to put leverage on it because it's only pulling back a little bit and you start making lots of money. 
where things go wrong is that you think you know what you're doing. You put lots of leverage on it. It doesn't pull back and you lose everything. So just keep that in mind. Okay, back to your comments, my crypto brothers and sisters, before we get into some of the news articles. Uh, what, what should we look at? Let's let's look at crypto bubbles, shall we? We'll go to the month. That looks prettier. Or should we go to the year? No, the month looked better. Okay, over to your comments, my crypto brothers and sisters. Where was I? Wonder Woman, trading bots, Adam, do they really work? Yes, they do. But the issue with trading bots is, great question, is it's like Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet works, but most people download a dodgy Trust Wallet. Trading bots do work. They're not always going to get it right, but the majority of people join a, a bot that it isn't real. So, so this is where most people get scammed. Someone rings them up and says, hey, we've got this trading bot and this great platform. Give us some, Give us your money and we'll make you rich. And you think you're using their bot, but there is no bot. There's just someone stealing your money. So it's not that trading bots are the risk. It's that those who disguise themselves as a trading bot, that's the risk. That's the danger with trading bots. You're not actually using a trading bot. You're using someone, to be blunt, typically in Israel, because that's where the majority of the scam call centers are, in Israel, the Middle East, uh, no, sorry, Africa, and London. A lot of scam centers are there. You're talking to someone with an accent. You think it's all good. You're looking at looking at a dashboard. You've got all this money. And then the next day, like, bang, it's all gone. There was no trading bot. They weren't trading your money. They were just stealing your money. And you were looking at a fake dashboard. Crypto boy. Mt. Gox exchange delayed another year. Repayment day never comes. What is really going on? Yeah, tragic. So with Mt. Gox, a little bit of a refresher. Hang on, just have my broker. <clears throat> Mt. Gox, one of, if not the first exchanges. Um, people bought lots of crypto on it, Bitcoin. Uh, then it shut down and Mt. Gox still had the Bitcoin. Years later, all of these people who have got Bitcoin on Mt. Gox still want that Bitcoin and the Bitcoin still exists. But where Mt. Gox is being a bit dodgy now is that they're saying, well, how about we buy your Bitcoin off you, but we're going to buy the Bitcoin. And you might say, well, that's cool. Okay, buy the Bitcoin off me. But here's the catch, kids. What they want to do, and this is why I think they're pushing for it, Nico, they're actually trying to say, well, you bought a 1,000 Bitcoin when it was $8 each. So we're going to give you $8,000. And can you imagine? You'd be like, hang on a second. I'm sitting on tens of millions of dollars here, and you want to give me the purchase price at the time. And and Mt. Gox is going, yeah, we'll pay you for your Bitcoin. We're not going to account for inflation. We're not going to account for the stuff around Factor. We're not going to account for the opportunity cost. And we're certainly not going to account for the market value of those coins. You bought 1,000 Bitcoin at $8 a piece. Here's $8,000. And understandably, people are going, no way. Give me my Bitcoin. Like who would say, okay, I'll take the $8,000. Maybe someone who's really desperate. Maybe someone who thinks they'll never get the money, the Bitcoin back. But that's that's where it's really horrific. C can you imagine having a thousand Bitcoin that you bought at eight bucks or even lower, a few bucks a piece? And they're like, yeah, we're going to give you market value at the time that you bought it, not what it is now. Unbelievable. Snoop Doggy Dog, he says, they retired 21 of the Warthogs. Oh, we're talking about the ATEM. So from my agent on the front line, he goes, they retired 21 of the Warthogs in our current National Defense Authorization Act. They aren't going to be able to totally give up hogs. F-35s are going to retire before hogs are obsolete for close air support or CAS. Okay, that's good. So we're talking about the hogs here, which is this little aircraft here. A wicked machine, a subsonic aircraft. I remember, I don't know if I can tell you this story. Uh, I can, uh, I wanna, uh, I've got a story, but I don't know if I'll get in trouble if I tell you. All I can say is I was in an undisclosed location in the Middle East and I was driving with a fighter pilot. I, I, no, he wasn't a fighter pilot. He was a B-1 pilot. And he was driving me around the US airfield. I can't tell you where. And we went past these like bunkers and I, I i lived on this base and i didn't even know they were there and there was a squadron of these a10 tank busters there and i straight away as we drove past i said tank busters and he goes yeah you're not supposed to see them and i like just did 
And man, they look cool. They look so cool because on this base, we had all of these other aircraft. I can't tell you where and I can't tell you what. But I can tell you that as we sort of went past and I saw this squadron of A-10 tank busters, I'm like, wow, awesome. If you know what that aircraft can do, and, and if you want to hear a good war story about, um, what was the name? Female warthog pilot who saved a lot of Marines in Iraq. Captain... Uh, got it in a book here not that book hang on i am gonna look it up what was the name hang on got it how's this for quick referencing surrounded by books what was the name captain captain in incredible pilot of of this and she now goes around teaching a lot of people about her experience in combat saving a lot of marines come on where are you uh, Cap is it Campbell? I think it's Captain Campbell. I I'm pretty sure it's Captain Campbell. I can't, I can't find it in this book. <laughs> I need more time to look it up. I'm pretty sure it's Captain Campbell. Do your homework. Look at the story of Captain Campbell. Man, she's a badass. Dre says, no, sorry, um, coin tracking, not coin tracker. Coin tracking, not coin tracker. Oh, I think you're talking about something from before. Steve J, he says, as consumers, should it be up to us to make a product government needs should it be up to us to make a product government needs to simplify the tax system, see flat tax rates for different income brackets and be done with paying 55 middlemen? I, I agree. Look, th there's two arguments. No tax at all. Hang on, there's three arguments. No, why should we pay tax? User pays for everything. That's one argument. But I say, well, you kind of need tax because how can it be user pays for military? How can it be user pays for police? Like if you're in trouble and you call the police, they say, well, <laughs> what's your membership number? Or if you've had an accident and you need an ambulance and they say, quick, call an ambulance. And the ambo at the other end goes, what's the membership number of the person who's <laughs> in a car wreck? And same with a, a fire. But then you've got stuff that you can't see like, inf well, you can see if you look at it, but like infrastructure under the ground, stormwater as an example. Stormwater, most people don't understand how much infrastructure is under their feet with stormwater. So when it rains, you're not flooding everywhere. Um, you know, militaries, government agencies that should be doing the right thing for us, maybe environmental protection agencies, as long as they're doing the right thing. These things get out of control. Um, street lights, you know, is it user pays for street lights when you're walking down the street and there's a little code that goes, oh, Jono's walking down the street, so we're going to turn on the street light. Uh, so you need taxes. You, you'll never convince me, I don't think, that you don't need taxes. So one argument is no taxes. The other argument is we need um, what we've got at the moment with taxes. The more you earn, the more you pay. But the third argument, which I'm actually a big believer in, is a flat tax. Because as Steve Jay has said, you get rid of the 55 middlemen. And he's not exaggerating there. There are so many middlemen and middle people when it comes to taxes. Think of all the, just your account. And you say, well, that's one person. No, you've got the guy who built the accountant building. You've got the receptionist. You've got the trainees. You've got those who are studying under him and those who teach him. And then in the ATO, you've got those who are running the building, cleaning the building, sending out the fines and enforcing with police. There's just so much waste in this. When all you really need is, in my opinion, you have a tax-free threshold. If I was president or prime minister, and I wouldn't even have the power because they can't make this call, but I'd say, right, there's a tax-free threshold of, I'll figure it out, maybe 20 grand. I, I don't know. I'd have to sit down with economists and do the numbers, but there'll be a tax-free threshold of 20 grand. And then after that, it's 17.5% flat. That's it. Done. Can we claim this? No, it's just 17.5%. He said, well, hang on. I couldn't claim any business expenses. Yeah, but business people, think how much time you'd save. Think of all your business activity statements. They just disappear. Think of all the crap that you deal with in life. It just goes away. And you just know every dollar you earn, you're going to pay 17.5%. Okay. And you don't have to play all of these games of wheeling and dealing and corporate structures and this and that and claim this and claim that and then audit it and that. Just do a flat tax. Just a flat tax. Changes everything. Steve J, the system is made to run people to run on perpetual debt. If they cannot issue debt, the system implodes. Absolutely. We are a debt-based economy. Cal says markets will be interesting on Monday. Yes, they will. They will be cow. Uh, why will they be interesting? Uh, because, of, mate, pick your, pick your war. Pick your war. Do you want to pick your crane? 
You want to pick the conflict between India and Canada? Don't underestimate that. You want to pick what's happening in the Middle East? North Korea is ramping up as well. Don't, don't forget that one. It's everywhere. Then you've got the collapse of the US dollar, the Saudi and US relationship breaking down, petrodollar collapsing. Uh, then you have the money printing going burr. You've got the SWIFT network collapsing. You've got competition to banks. It's all, it's like simmering up. Now, hopefully I'm completely wrong. And on Monday, everyone says kumbaya and we all just get on and the debt magically disappears and money becomes hard and frictions disappear and we just continue in la-la land. Um, but if you believe that's going to happen, uh, I, I hope you're right. I've got to be careful what I say here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to choose my words very carefully because, first of all, I don't want to make you upset. Second of all, I don't want to be banned from YouTube. And third of all, security. Troy Cannon says, sorry for being late, my friend. Great to have you here, Troy. Haven't seen you for a while. Uh, Carlos Shabibi, <laughs> I love saying this name. Hello from Port Melbourne, Adam. I just got back from Greece with my friend family. Oh, that's why you put the Habibi. I love it. While I was away listening to your advice and read the Bitcoin Standard, a great book. What should I read next? Okay, let's get into the book of the week right now. So to answer your question, after reading the Bitcoin Standard, I would recommend re reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad to know how to build wealth through debt. And then the counter to that is read The Barefoot Investor by Scott Pape to look at getting wealth through assets and not debt. Um, but the book of the week this week is The Curse of the High IQ. So you want a diverse, in my opinion, you want a diverse library of different books for different things. You shouldn't just, re I, in my opinion, you shouldn't just read, fi read financial books. You shouldn't just read love no novels. I've never read a love novel, novel but I know you girls. <laughs> I know a lot of you love them, which is great. You shouldn't just read war books. You shouldn't just read these books. You should try and read lots of different books. And The Curse of the High IQ is written by um, a, a really funny fellow, Aaron Clary. So he is a straight shooter. He is an economist. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, he tells it how, is it how it is. He's got a business called Asshole Consulting. <laughs> it's the best. His, his business is called Asshole Consulting. So you pay this guy to, to consult. So you say, right, this is my situation. And instead of him going, well, you know, get an HR specialist and let's have a hug and let's paint rainbows everywhere and get more diversity. He just tells you how it is. He's just like, right, you're an idiot for this. You're a dickhead for that. You need to fix that. Get rid of her. Get rid of him. Hire her. Hire him. And he just tells it how it is. And he's actually written, I think, about four or five books. And I've read two of his books, and this is the third of his book I've read. And The Curse of the High IQ is, it just goes through why some of you may be lonely or find it difficult to make friends. Um, and it also goes through the scam of university and school in itself. And it goes through why you might, why you might find it difficult to maintain certain conversations. And I could really relate to the book because every time I meet someone, I try and learn something from them. So in my recent trip, I spoke about it last week, I was in Sydney speaking to a, a different group of people that were not in crypto. And we started to talk about economics and then I touched on the US dollar. And you could just see these people just glaze over. And then I could, I could see that they weren't interested. So, you know, you back away from the conversation. Don't force these conversations down people's throat. It's not, there's another good book for you, how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> if you want to win friends and influence people, don't shove down a, a topic down their throat that they're not interested in and don't try and be a know-it-all. You know, the, the best thing is to ask questions and let them speak because most people want to speak about themselves or what they're interested in. But when I started to speak about economics and the collapse of the US dollar and the collapse of all fiats and what, what backs money, they just started to glaze over. And so I quickly, just to sort of defuse the situation, there was someone in the group of people who was talking about fireworks festivals in Northern Territory. So there's like a thing called Territory Day. So is, if there's anyone up in Northern Territory, there's one day <laughs> a year, I've never done it, but in the Northern Territory in Australia, which is like another country in itself, for one day, you can let off fireworks. I think it's from like 10 o'clock in the morning till midnight. So it's just like this day of debauchery where everyone's just letting off all these fireworks. So here I was about to go into this deep conversation about 
economics, finance, what money is, Bitcoin, etc. They all started to glaze over. So I just said, tell us about Territory Day. And he's like, oh, yeah, you get fireworks and you blow stuff up. And like you can see the whole group go, oh, yeah, that's cool. And I'm like, wow, that's as deep as this conversation is going to go. This conversation is not going to go any deeper than letting off things that go bang. Uh, and you know what? I'm like, cool, finished my drink and went back to my hotel. But it's cool. I'm not saying I've got a particularly high IQ. I mean, my IQ score is high and I'm certainly above the standard deviation. But this book, I actually recommend you read that it might actually help you understand if if you find it difficult to maintain certain conversations. As I was saying, I always try and learn from people. There was a time that I was at, I was at some random party and, you know, sometimes you're stuck talking to someone. They're not your friend. You don't know them. So you're just like, well, I've got to make conversation. I, it's happened lots, but I remember this one particular time that I, I stuck with a, an air conditioning guy. And I said, you know, I said, well, what do you do, mate? And he goes, oh, I'm, I've got my own air conditioning company. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I said, well, hey, I've got a question for you. I said, you know how you've got these compressors that are outside and they've got a fan running? Why do they mount air conditioners, the compressor part, in the sun, where if they put it in the shade, it'll be running cooler? And he just glazed over and he goes, oh, it doesn't matter. And I said, well, doesn't that matter because there's a fan on it and the fan's running it cool? I, I don't know anything about this. I'm just trying to learn. If the fan's trying to run it cool, why not position it in the shade, which would make it cooler as opposed to in the sun? And I just couldn't get any conversation out of this guy. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, and then I went back to, so did you watch a football? Yeah, go the Raiders. And I'm like, oh, kill me. And they talk about sports ball in this as well. So that's the book of the week, The Curse of the High IQ watch it. I think many of you relate to it and there's hope for all of us. A lot of the friendships that we can make are in fact here on the internet. Think about what you're doing right now. It's Sunday night and you're listening to someone talking about economics and books. I mean, it goes to show all of you the IQ that you have here, the level of curiosity and commitment you have to this space. Now, admittedly, some of you are listening to this later, but you're listening to it. This will be a two hour show where you've got some random dude on the internet who's not being paid by anyone, who's not sponsored by anyone, who's just talking about economics, finance, the political space, money, investment. You're, you are the high IQ. Whether your score tested high or not, the sheer fact that you're here listening to this, and it's not even a bull market. That's the other thing that puts you above. Um, these aren't words to make you feel good, to say, yeah, we're all one community and I'm, I'm kissing your backside. No, not at all. The proof is in the pudding. You are here. You are here turning up on a Sunday night live listening to someone talk about finance and economics, as opposed to going down to the pub and getting drunk and watching Bathurst or sports ball or, I don't know, random stuff. And you're doing it during a bear market when the market's not doing anything. It's just tracking sideways after dropping out. You're miles ahead of so many people. And I, I actually implore that you read this book. It's so easy to read. Aaron Clary, he is hilarious. As I said, his business is asshole Consulting. I think we desperately lack so much truth in this world. Story time with Uncle Adam. So I used to be a, I, I've taught overseas. I've taught in Australia. I've taught all over the world. And I've taught many different subjects. Uh, mathematics, English, economics, crypto, languages, uh, and swimming, as well as a sports instructor. Swimming was one of the things I used to teach a lot at the Australian Institute of Sport many years ago. And credit where credit's due. I'm a bloody good swimming teacher. I am, even today I was at the gym and after the gym, I went to the sauna and then I went for a swim and there was a group of like, um, I think they were Indian or Nepalese based on their accents and they were, <laughs> they were trying to swim and they were almost drowning. And I just went up to them and said, g'day, I'm Adam. Can I show you a technique? And, and they were really good though because you could tell they're international students and they're all like, yeah, yeah, please give it to us. And they're probably about 24, 25. I said, you know, do this like that, follow me, do it that way, go on. And within about 15 seconds, I taught these people to go from sinking like a rock to actually maintaining a stroke. And I didn't want to embarrass them and I was busy, but I said, yeah, just keep working on that and I promise you, you'll get better. And they're all like, yeah, thanks so much. When it came to teaching children though, so I was teaching kids as young as, as young as one, even younger, like infants that, you know, can't speak or walk or anything all the way up to competitive swimmers. And I remember once teaching this class where, there's a, so you have terms, bear with me. You have these terms where you're teaching all these kids how to swim 
and they, they go up a level each term. All of my students in every term, no matter who they were, always advanced three or four lessons, three or four grades ahead. And all of them went from learning this level to that level within a very short time. And the reason, in my opinion, why they did it so well, it's not because they were talented. It was, in fact, because of my teaching method. And my teaching method was teaching to these children like human beings talking to these children like human beings and not like idiots. And I'll give you an example. So you'd have all these lanes up and, you know, I'd have this lane and there'll be another instructor with that lane and some instructor would have that lane. And I was typically the only male instructor in it. And for whatever reason, the kids just gravitated up to me. They, they wanted to be in my class. And when they were in my class, I just kept it real with them. I didn't speak to them the way I'm speaking to you, but I didn't speak to them like idiots. And what I mean by that is I remember this woman next to me who was teaching the same group of kids as in the same number of kids at the same level, in the same pool at the same time. And when it came to a big part of learning to swim is breathing out with your face in the water. And to do that, you with kids, you say, can you blow me some bubbles? And you put your face in the water and you, you blow air out and you blow bubbles. And this woman next to me, <laughs> why am I talking about this on a crypto channel? It's about this book. She said to these kids, she goes, can you blow big, scary bubbles? And I looked at her. Like, it wasn't my class, but I was teaching my class, but it really jumped out. And you see all these kids look at her. And she's like, can you blow big, scary bubbles? And I'm like, Ugh. And you can see all these kids just going, what the hell's scary about a bubble? What do you mean big, scary bubbles? So I just went back to my kids and I said, I need you to blow in the water hard. And they'd be like, Pfft. and I say, no, blow really hard like bang. So that, then they've got it. And this is really important when you're doing your strokes to get all your air out in the water. So when you come up, you can breathe very quickly. Anyway, it just made me think people are lacking the honesty of education, the honesty of this is how it is. Blow air into the water. So when you turn your head up, you can breathe in. I'm not yelling at the kids. I'm having a good time with the kids. Kids love me and I'm playing with them. They're playing with me and we get done. And that lesson that was taking the other instructors three lessons to teach was taking me about 35 seconds and I'm not even exaggerating. And then once we get that, we go to the next thing and the next thing. And I said, right, we're all going into the big pool. So I pull all these kids out. We'd make a noodle change, you know, where you've got these floating noodles. You hold that noodle, you hold that noodle. And we all walk into the big pool and you're into this big, massive Olympic pool, like little five or six-year-olds. I'm like, right, let's go. And they're like, you sure? Whereas the other instructors, they're not doing that until like three terms later. I'm like, no, let's get into it. Why am I saying this? It's because with the curse of the high IQ and Aaron Clary's style, I'd love to meet the guy. He just tells it how it is and he just advances your education so quickly. There's just no time to muck around. Whereas when you look at like, you know, HR interviews as an example, you go to it for an interview for a job and they're like, what's your favorite color? You're like, what? Where do you see yourself in five years? Man, it depends how well you're going to treat me in this business. And when you come into the shop, are you going to smile? It's like, I'm an engineer. Who cares? <laughs> so I'm ranting here. The Curse of the High IQ by Aaron Clary. That's a book of the week. Okay. Let's go back to the crypto bubbles. <laughs> Can you see the big, scary bubbles? Man, I... insanity. Steve J. He says, neutrality is more dangerous than fear as neutrality is the uncertainty. Oh, wow. Powerful words. Very good. Snoop, he says, read the $33.5 trillion debt. What difference at this point does it make? Secretary of State, uh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, 13 hours of brilliant leadership, um, spore that lovely gem, fits the debt clock just as well. It's a really good point, Snoop. And because he raises a good point, like, what's the difference? And he's talking about Clinton when she was Secretary of State. You know, what's the difference? If we're at, I mean, really think about it for them. If they're at $33.5 trillion or $63.5 trillion, they're not paying it back and they're still just printing this worthless crap. So it's we're past the point of no return. Wade says, hello from Brisbane. Uh, he hello, mate from Brisbane, the place where the sun <laughs> shines longer and the cows wouldn't know what time to get up if we had daylight savings. Wade, I, I love the banter. I love Queensland. But why you don't have daylight savings, absolutely insanity. Insanity. <laughs> Benny O, XRP has two court wins and the price doesn't pump. Is it being suppressed? Benny O, great question. I, I'm glad you asked about it. So let's get into the news. And then I'll, 
Now, hang on, I'll ask you because the XRP is not in the news. There's other ones in the news. And let me just check if it's in the news. Da, 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 da. No, it's not in the news. Okay. I've really been thinking about XRP a lot. So XRP is not doing what XRP is supposed to do. And I know XRP, I get it. The XRP arm is going to kill me here. No, man, it's a superior product. It's got massive liquidity pools. It's got the best technology. There's all these people who put money in. Got it. I got it. Let's make sure we're talking about the same thing here. Why isn't the price moving? Why aren't the banks move, using it? Uh, so the, the banks weren't using it before the court case. And now the court case is over times two. They're still not using it. And the price has still not gone up. Oh, you don't get it. No, I, I don't get it. I'm admitting I do not get it. It's a superior product with superior liquidity pools and superior technology, and it's not moving. And you say, yeah, they're signing all these deals. Well, are they? Like, we get reports all the time, XRP or Ripple signed with this company and that company and this company and that company and this country and that. Why isn't anything happening? Like, really, why is... Why is there more trading globally, not in America, on other coins than on XRP? Why aren't the banks using it as we've been promised for years? This isn't a new coin. This was around before 2017, and it's still not doing anything. Why? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, no, Adam, it's a good product. I get that part. The argument isn't, does the technology work? That's not my argument. The argument isn't about the liquidity pools. My argument is if it's so bloody good, why isn't it being used? Oh, well, they've signed all these contracts. Got it. <laughs> why aren't they using it? Oh, they will use it. You've been saying that for, what are you up to now? Six, seven years? And seven years in crypto is like 70 years in human time. It's moving that quickly. Great question, Benny O. You, you can feel like it fired up about it. And, and for the record, I have lots of XRP. Lots of it, because I will not discriminate against profits. I will not discriminate against profits unless they are illegal or immoral. Logi, he says, we have green monthly candles, September close, WPLS and die historic for our new. Benny, XRP, Benny says, XRP has two court wins. Hang on. Did you put it in twice? Uh, I think you've, you've started it. Uh, XRP has two court wins and the price hasn't pumped. Adam, your thoughts. Is the price being suppressed or people hodl and no fresh fiat? The only way the price can go up is if, if there's a demand on it. So that's for any coin. And where's the demand on XRP? That There needs to be a demand on XRP. Oh, there is. Okay, well, prove it. Where's the price? Big Bear Slides says, go Solana. Troy Cannon says, any comments on how current Israel conflict will affect the crypto markets and other financial markets? And unfortunately, it will likely put the markets up it will likely put the price of crypto up. The real test, Troy, is Monday. Not our Monday, America's Monday. So you, you have to wait probably another, wait another 24 hours, Troy, to see what will happen. Benny O says, another random question. Do you own any property outside Australia? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to think of it. I nearly bought a car park in Spain, but no, I don't. Not directly. I don't have land titles of property out side i mean funds that own property outside of the country steve j note the btc cme futures daily charts has been trading above the 200 moving average since 17 august whilst the btc daily spot price has been trading under the 200 day moving average the same period interesting good observation julie says you never sound drunk i can understand you at this speed thank you julie we love our crypto sister that gives uncle adam some support we love banter but we love the feminine energy that every now and then says something nice. <laughs> Don't worry, I love banter. When I was younger, I hated banter. Now, now I see it as a love language, particularly in Australia, uh, when when guys are calling them. I won't say the word, but think of a very harsh word in English. If you call, if a man calls a man this word, it can be an absolute sign of aggression or an absolute sign of brotherhood. Jay says the market has chosen Speedy Network, i.e., Solana. But for scalability, yeah. yeah, good good point, Jay. So remember, we go to the crypto trilemma, and XRP is going to tell me that they've conquered the trilemma. No coin has conquered the trilemma completely. No coin, including Bitcoin. Speed, security, decentralization. You got to give up one of those corners, or be weaker on one of those corners, 
to build up the other two. IB19, I'm kind of new, three years in. I don't get XRP. The use case seems to be anti-crypto ethos. Am I wrong? IB19, that's a bloody good question. No, you are completely right. And, and this is the friction between the XRP army and the rest of crypto. So, so this is the history. Bitcoin was, we don't need banks. We can be our own bank. XRP was, we can be better we can facilitate the payments between banks. Now, that, that already triggers a lot of people. No, Adam, you don't get it. Slow down. Let me finish. There's an argument with the XRP army that, no, XRP is not for the banks. XRP is for the people. And XRP can be used by the individual. That's only partially true. It's partially true, and I can prove it. XRP can be used by the people. For example, I can send you, and any coin is the same. I can send you XRP right now. So you and I do some, I be 19, you make me a thumbnail and you say, I want 50 XRP. I send it to you. Cool. I have just used XRP peer to peer from me to you. Cool. All coins can do that. But this is where I call out the XRP army, where they say, no, it's not about empowering the banks. Yes, it is. Because all of your deals that you're signing are with banks. How many deals has Bitcoin signed with banks? Or oh, Bitcoin doesn't have a head office. Exactly, because that's the difference. The, and I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I'm just saying it is what it is. It, and it's okay. It's okay. Bitcoin is at its core. You are your own bank. We don't need a central body. XRP at its core is we facilitate payments between that provider and that provider. provider quicker with less friction and less fees. And I don't know why the XRP army won't admit it. You can see all the work that Garlinghouse is doing and Ripple is doing with signing contracts and deals with MoneyGram, which is a remedi uh, remediation, no, not remediation, remittance product where you're sending money from mum and dad in Nepal, or sorry, the kids, well, yeah, mum and dad in Nepal to the worker in the Middle East or vice versa. You've got Ripple signing contracts with big banks so they can be the new SWIFT network and liquidity providers where you can do cross-border payments from point A to point B. Cool. Why do I need them? Why can't I just use Bitcoin? Why can't I use a stable coin? Why can't I use any of the 26,000 coins? And the selling point for XRP is it facilitates the banks. So IB19, you, you have got it completely right. That was the friction with, that was the fight. That was a real, the XRP army versus the Bitcoin maxis. That, that's where it goes back. So you have to go back down uh, seven, eight years. So nearly a decade ago, that was the big conflict. And then it kind of changed over time where, you know, Bitcoin's not really doing what we thought it would do and XRP is doing not what we thought it would do. And then it went to court and then it won and then it sort of won and then it won again. And then the price didn't move. But ultimately, that's the core difference. And, and here's the thing. So XRP Army, before you shoot me down, I'm going to go down in the comments. And say, you don't get it. Adam. I, I can prove I get it. I can prove I, get, I can get it that the price has not done what they said it would do. The banks haven't used it as they said they would. People aren't using it as a sole peer-to-peer -peer as they promised it could be. It's not doing what it said it would do. But here's the thing. It's okay. It's okay that we have more than one language. It's okay that we have more than one type of car. It's okay that we have one more than type of money. It's okay. It's okay. So what have I done? I've got both. I've got Bitcoin and XRP. That's cool. I've got lots of different coins. Which one's going to win? I don't know. Which one do I like the most? Bitcoin. I like Bitcoin because it is truly decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, hard supply, the most secure mining network on the planet of Earth. Fact. Absolute fact. You can even see, and, and there's an old argument that oh, no, all the mining was centralized in China. Okay, well, what happened then? When China shut it down, now where's the mining? And even when it was centralized in China and there was less difficulty and there was less mining power, how many times was there a 51% hack? Never. So now there's more mining power and it's more decentralized than the mining power. If you couldn't hack it back then with a 51% attack when there was very small terror hash going on per unit, per country, per person, what makes you think you're going to be able to do it now? So the old argument that Bitcoin could be hacked, look, 
anything could happen. But it's got 13 years of proof and 13 years of being attacked and 13 years of people trying to crack the code. And it hasn't been done. It hasn't been done. How many times has Bitcoin gone to court? Never. And that's okay. It's different. Bitcoin is more decentralized than XRP. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, well, why isn't SEC taking Bitcoin to court? It's because there is no Bitcoin company. It's just a, an algorithm. How is it that I can sue Ripple, but I can't sue Bitcoin? A anyone who tries to say that XRP is just as decentralized as Bitcoin, that's your counter argument. Even to you, the XRP army, why hasn't the SEC sued Bitcoin? Bitcoin's bigger. Bitcoin's more of a threat to the banks than XRP. Why didn't they sue Bitcoin? It's because you can't. Great question, IB19. Logi says, what are your thoughts on SOMI and as a community builder? Uh, look, I've reached out to SOMI. I think you're talking about my friend or your friend SOMI. <laughs> I've listened to some of his stuff. I love his accent and I love how he speaks, but um, I don't know him well enough. I like some of his content. He loves Hex. Uh, I'd like to meet him. Jay says, uh, don't get hacked like Mark Cuban. Yeah, well, he's an expert on exp on crypto until he gets hacked and he wants rules. Wade says, uh, going further down, further. <laughs> Jay says Toyota. I think you're talking about Myota. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Toyota, but I like what you've done there. Cal, he says, I have some limit orders for ETH at $700. I guess I'm bearish. <laughs> My mate, good luck. Here's the thing, Cal. If you've put limit orders in at 700 bucks, there's no cost for doing that. And let's say one, there's two things that can happen or three things. One, your, your order will never be filled. Who cares? It didn't cost you anything. Two, Ethereum could rapidly drop and then you'll get that order filled. Or three, what has happened in the past is that there's a glitch in the matrix. So, and that matrix is the exchange you're on. Sometimes there's a glitch on the exchange and something spikes or dips and your order actually gets filled at $700. So I've got no issue doing that at all. It costs you nothing. The market could drop and you scoop it up. But the, the only, here's the danger. Let's say Ethereum has a massive bug and it's, it completely collapses and it goes to zero and you're, you're away at the shop. Oh, you may, maybe you don't even have to be at the shops. The, the market just crashes so quickly. And you're like, oh my God, Ethereum's going to zero dollars. And you try to run back to your computer to turn off that order, to cancel the order. It's too late. <laughs> You've just bought $700 worth of something that's worth nothing. That's the only danger with that. Uh, but with e Ethereum, well, what's the likelihood that would happen? Splinter, hey, Stokes, Ian Gang. Glad I, I made a live one. Good to have you here, Splinter. Uh, I know your name, but I won't say it. Neil has says, on which exchange might one short a token? Should one be inclined to do so? Well, I'm glad you asked. Should one be inclined to do so, Neil? One should go over to the crypto.land and one should look at Bybit. That's what I would tell you. Matthew Cooper, what use what uses do you think they will have for blockchain in war? Um decentralization of information. That, that's what I would say. So just messaging systems, security of information. That that's the real power of blockchain in war in my opinion great question very good question splinter if you don't if you haven't already adam would love your thoughts on whether this new war in israel will be some sort of black swan event impacting the broader market beyond what the ukraine impact was okay so again the the real test is on monday but when it broke out the market actually pumped a little bit because the money's got to go somewhere and, and let's just war game it <laughs> probably a bad analogy for a war so war picks up again money printer goes burr what happens to the us dollar it gets diluted because they print more of that money so everything can so now you have more money keeping all things consistent if bitcoin holds its purchasing power the price of bitcoin will go up why because of what it's compared to has gone down but what can also happen is people flee and put their money into a safe haven. So it's like, well, I don't want to put it in the US dollar because I keep printing it. So will I put it in gold? Will I put it in stocks? Will I put it in bonds? Will I put it in real estate? Will I put it in Bitcoin? And some of it goes to Bitcoin. We've seen this before. Equally, when big companies like 
you know, the war machine, they get paid a lot of money in US dollars. What do they do with that money? Well, they invest some of that money. They buy some gold, they buy some stocks, they buy some bonds, and they'll probably buy some Bitcoin. So keeping all things consistent, what will actually happen is what Bitcoin is compared to the US dollar will go down in value because it'll be inflated because I print more of the money. So keeping all things consistent, the price will then go up. Equally, money will pour into it because people will be saying, well, I need to get out of the US dollar because it's going down. So I'll put maybe some in Bitcoin. The big war machine who gets all this money to buy all the weapons and arms and stuff, they'll put their money somewhere. Some will be in gold, some will be in real estate, and maybe a little bit will be in Bitcoin. But the other thing that's happened, as we can see in wars, what actually happens is when people flee war zones, there's a lot of money in Israel, a lot of money in Israel. How do they get the money out of the country? If you had to flee a country right now, we, we saw this with Iran a while ago. A lot of millionaires and billionaires were fleeing the country. How did they get the money out of the country? And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can't do a wire transfer, especially if there's sanctions on the country, or you don't want it taxed or stopped or the fees. You can't carry it in gold. It's too big. You can't carry it in cash. It's too big, and it will be stopped at the airport. How would you get $50 million or a billion dollars or even half a million dollars out of a country? How do you do it? You buy Bitcoin, you put it on a ledger, ledger, you shelf that ledger and you leave the country. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. Or you transfer it from, you don't even have to put it on a ledger. You could put it, oh, you can't put it on exchange because it's KYC. Or you could put it on Exodus. You could put it on a, a DEX. That's a bit risky, risky. But if you want to be in complete control, you take that cash, you get an on-ramp, you buy Bitcoin and you get the hell out of that country. And that puts a demand on it as well. Mav. He says, good evening, Adam and everyone else. Big Bear's Flight says, I still want my BTC. <laughs> Big Bear's Flight, poor old Mal. I still want my BTC from Mount Gox. They're not getting away with this BS, that's for sure. Hang in there, brother. The, Mal is an OG. He's got he's got Bitcoin on the old Mount Gox. Snoop, yes, it was Captain Kim Campbell. Thank you. We're talking about the A-10 tank buster pilot. Captain Kim Campbell. I think she's a major. You met her. Oh, I'm so jealous. If there's anyone I could meet, man, that'd be awesome. Oh, Troy is now, she's a colonel. Okay, so she's gone from captain to major to lieutenant colonel to colonel Kim Reed Campbell. She got married as well, did she, Troy? Cool. She should be a colonel by now because that was years ago. And if she's still in. And what a war hero. You should look. I'm bringing it up. Look at, look at this plane. And it was a testament, Kim Campbell A-10. It was a testament to her aircraft as well, because her aircraft was completely shot to pieces. Here we go. Let's bring it up. Look at that. Look at that aircraft. The rear vertical horizontal stabilizer, half of it's missing. You know, let's get rid of you there, Troy. Look at all those small arms bullets in that aircraft and in the wing. So it's a testament to the pilot and to the aircraft she had permission to punch out her aircraft was so damaged that she was supposed to punch out before she got back uh but but she rode this bad boy back even though it it, it was supposed to well could have crashed into the ground she lost so much control of the avionics that it because it was so shot to pieces look at it damn she's badass you got to meet a snoop i'm so jealous Look at that aircraft. Look, look, that's a lot of small arms into that aircraft. It's It doesn't show how accurate the Iraqis were. <laughs> it actually shows how close to them she was. It's very difficult to shoot an aircraft with a rifle or anti-air. And for her to have that many bullets in the aircraft, man. And the thing still flew. The thing still flew. And you can see all the guys going, oh, crikey. Look what she... You don't say crikey in American. Um... And for her to get it back, she lost all the avionics from memory. Uh, read the book. Read her story. And even if you want to watch her um, YouTube speeches, really inspirational. You can tell I get excited about it because it's just badass. Um, John, John, Johnny, John says expenditure tax. Neil Dennison says, well, Ward Carroll was a F-14 backseater, has a YouTube channel same name. 11 months ago, he interviewed Captain Campbell. Worth a watch. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Neil Dennison says Ward Campbell. Hemi Raw, great to have you here. He says, late to the party. Hey, bro. Hope all is well. 
Carlos Habibi, he says, if Bitcoin continues to grow to capture a larger share of the global wealth, it may force governments to become more and more a form of voluntary organization, which can only acquire its taxes. Powerful statement, Carlos. Think about it. If we, if we truly had a hard money that governments couldn't print, well, the government doesn't print it out of them. The, the Fed does. Oh, okay. Well, how come I can't print money? Because I don't have the government's permission. It's all a scam. You print the money. We'll give you these useless piece of paper, <laughs> bits of paper. We'll buy that money off you with this treasury or this bond. You give us that money, then we can spend it on what we like. Can you imagine a government actually had to run at a profit? Think about that. Could you imagine a government actually had to generate its own revenue? Well, how would you do it? You tax the crap out of your people. And then if you're somewhere like Victoria, you put speed cameras everywhere. You set them to two kilometers above and you, it's essentially a tax on the people. Oh no, speed cameras save lives. Yeah. Okay. If you're doing 130 in an 80, absolutely should be busted. But when you're doing 102 in a hundred zone going down a hill and they set up cameras behind a bridge, come on, that's not safety. That's revenue raising. Carlos Habibi, voluntary by offering its subject services, they would be willing to pay for BTC standard. Absolutely. The BTC standard, but you have read. Good stuff. Wolf, he says, Aaron Clary, best man, highly recommend. You've got to read Aaron Clary. Clintron says, hey, Adam and crew. Missed most of this one. We'll catch up at 1.75 speed. Go to two times. Attila, hey, Attila. Long time no here. He says, hey, Adam. How are you doing, mate? I'm just joining now, but I'll catch up with what I missed tomorrow. Did you get my book recommendations? I did, and I haven't read it, but once I read it, I think Attila gave us our last book recommendation. Was it you, Attila, who gave us mastery? Uh, you, you're batting 100% at the moment or batting 1,000. Neil Dennison, I was in the army up in Darwin about 25 years ago. On Territory Day, we had <laughs> we had block wars. That sounds awesome. So you're talking about Territory Day with fireworks. Dude, that would be so much fun. Territory Day where you just basically got this debauchery of pandemonium and fireworks for one day. I should go up there for a territory day just to experience it. Although, Neil, I did hear apparently during this conversation that I was talking about, apparently someone lost their arm on territory day. <laughs> Man, what type of firecracker do they have? Matthew Cooper. Sometime I question my IQ though, but does because but does because I question myself show signs of intelligence? So Matthew, for me. Like I, I hate it when someone gets a really good, and the, the book talks about this. They go, you know, I get straight A's in school. I'm really intelligent. I'm like, uh, are you really intelligent or were you able to regurgitate what you were taught? For me, intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing thoughts on the same subject at the same time. That, that's my definition of intelligence. So something's happening. It could be this or it could be that. And I can openly explore both of those competing things at the same time and not melt my brain. What you see, in my opinion, at university, it's like, no, it's this way because that purple-haired, land whale, man-hating, gender studies professor said it is that way. It's like, well, why? It's like, because she said so, or Z said so. Well, could it be, no, it can't be, they, they just melt down. It's like, whoa, they're, they're kind of a de debates. Okay, we're going to have a guest speaker on the campus today. No, let's riot. It's like, that, that's the epitome of stupidity. Because if you go back to the, you know, the Greek empire where they were having the, the first um, philosophers having basically de debates or intellectual battles in, in an arena. That was kind of the birth of the lawyer where people would argue your point on your behalf. That was where intelligence really flourished and thoughts and ideas and concepts um, grew. But to answer your question, Matthew, I, I think the ability to question yourself is a sign of high IQ. Like, why do I think this way? Why am I doing that? Why did I do that? Could I do this? What if I did that? But if it's like, no, 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 I just, I'm going to watch sports ball and swingy bat game and cars racing around a track and give me beer. I was like, well, how much intelligence have you got? Crypto boy says, give Adam some more likes. Yeah, give us a like. Give us a tap, tap, tappity tap. Hex Go Yo, he says, love the show. Makes me feel better. <laughs> Thank you, Hex Go Yo. I'm we're talking a lot about war and stuff. Wonder Woman, he goes, we're lucky to have you, Adam. I can listen to your verbal diarrhea all day. Thank you, Wonder Woman. What a beautiful backhanded comment. Absolutely gorgeous. We love our Wonder Woman. I, I wish we could, you know what would be good? If we could give each other likes, that would be good. 43 OG, listening to the Machiavellians at the moment. Very interesting book by James 
Burnham should check it out. V, he says, thanks for that reminder, Uncle Adam. Not sure which reminder, but you're welcome. I'm behind here. Adam C, high IQ doesn't mean you're smart. It basically is basically what the book is saying. Yeah. And, and it's also, it's, no, it's not only just saying that. It's also saying that when you do have a high IQ, it, it can be difficult to relate to the masses because the masses are average. And <laughs> that's okay because if you look at the distribution of intelligence on a bell curve, the majority are in the middle of the bell curve. That's the standard distribution of many things. The masses are average because that's what makes it average. When you're outside the average, it can be hard to relate or communicate with the masses. And that's, I, I would argue, what the book mainly touches on. And it sort of says, hey, that's okay. And also, this is how you could deal with it. Paul Young says, don't forget to hit like. Give us a like, crypto brothers and sisters. Adam C., which I 100% agree with. Cool. Adam C. says, Adam, <laughs> Adam Strokes. Uh, come on, you can do more individual uh, better than that. Hemi Raw says, no daylight. Hang on. Count of Marcy says, HR is nothing more than an overpaid secretary. Yeah. HR is, you know what HR also is, Count of Marcy? It's also a liability not a lie, an anti-liability thing. So when you think about what HR does in organizations now, it's like, okay, do we have inclusion? How do we ha handle harassment? How did, what, what policies did we do in for making sure that we're not going to get sued here? So in a litigious society, it's almost like HR is a necessity in itself to protect the company. Hemi Raw says no daylight savings here in WA as well. That's right. It's not in WA. Hemi Raw, because you guys produce so much value in, for this country, I'll let it slide. Still think it's nuts though. Wonder Woman, our chooks like getting up early, brother. <laughs> the, the animals don't know what time it is. They get up when the when the sun comes up. Just don't set your clock to four o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up. Donna Collins, daylight savings not welcome in Queensland. Just work with the real time, not adjusted time. <laughs> Use the daylight, Donna. We're, we're having fun here. Donna, my crypto sister, you look new. I, I don't recognize you, but you're welcome here and we love a bit of banter. Why do you want daylight at four o'clock in the morning when the masses are asleep? Or should be at four, four o'clock in the morning, should be asleep. When you could use that same hour of daylight at eight o'clock at night, walking the dog, having a barbecue, surfing in the garden. Why did you put them? Why do you waste that light? That's why it's called daylight saving. Save that light for the end of the day. Use it when you're awake. Last time I was in Queensland, not last time, I think it was like three times ago, I stayed in this hotel when it was like non, when it was daylight savings time. And the curtains in my hotel were like sheets, like tissues. And at four o'clock in the morning, the sun came in and goes, wake up. And I'm like, oh God, I'm not starting work until seven or eight. Why do I need work? At, why do I need light at four o'clock in the morning? Meanwhile, then it's at 6.30 at night and it's dark. I, I could go on. Dan Wednesday. He says, still remember the super yacht story. Since then, I've always checked my bill is correct and I'm getting what I paid for. What super yacht story? I've forgotten. Did I tell a super yacht story? What super yacht story? Count of Marcy, quant QNP is the, in the news. Finbear. Yeah, finally, Finbear. Good to, Finbear, I want to bring you on the channel. Finbear, write to me and we'll have you as a guest on the channel. He says, good morning. Almost missed this. For my defense, I was cooking steaks and eggs. Cool. Finbear, did you get rid of those roosters? Can't, you can't have five roosters with six girls. It's it's pandemonium. Julie says, Adam, we all gravitate to you. Thank you, Julie. Gosh, we love Julie. Thank you, Julie. BMA says, I agree with Adam. Thank you, BMA. I'm not sure what on, but I appreciate it. He says, do you think that Hex crew is different than the XRP army? Of course. We, we all have different tribes. So the XRP army, the hexagons, the Bitcoin maxis, we are all different tribes, but we all have something in common. I think we all agree that fiat is a scam and we all agree that crypto is the future. The, the tragedy for crypto is that we have so much conflict, conflict within ourselves. It, it's almost like a British soccer uh, league, you know, the Brits in soccer, how the they sometimes, I don't know if it's still this way, but certainly I can remember on the news, you'd see these Brits go to watch a soccer match or a football, as they say, and that they put them in, <laughs> they put them in cages because it, it was too violent amongst themselves. They're like throwing bottles and rocks and stabbing each other. 
<laughs> and they're watching a game of soccer. It's like, what the hell, man? You both love the game. You should like good competition. Embrace the sport together. And yet it was almost like a, a murder case every time they had a football game. I don't know if it's that way now. Have I got any British agents in the field that can report from the front lines? But I certainly remember the, the visual of that. And I sometimes wonder, are, are we falling into that trap in the crypto land? Do we? It's like, no, my way is the best way. No, my way is the best way. It's like, no, you're bad. No, he's bad. It's like, come on. Let's all work together. Uh, Jay says, XRP Army, please pump my small bag. <laughs> Carlos Habibi. I love this name, Carlos. Carlos Habibi says, hey, Adam, any thoughts on why you think Dan Andrews stepped down? Will we find out why? Uh, yes, I do have thoughts on that. So for the international viewers, Dan Andrews was the premier of the Victorian of the state of Victoria. Uh, the, the state is in immense amount of debt. It has the record for the most brutal lockdown globally, not in Australia, but globally during the COVID pandemic. Uh, hang on, I've got to be fair, because in China, let's be fair. So certainly in time, it was the longest and it was pretty harsh. But let's be fair, in China, they were welding the door shut to apartment complexes. So he didn't go that far. Let, let's let's be fair here. <laughs> Andrews wasn't welding shut doors to apartment complexes. But he beyond that, it was the longest lockdowns and the harshest lockdowns globally. The state has never been in so much debt. It is a heavily police state, but to be fair, in my opinion, it always has been. Speed cameras everywhere, like out of control. I hate driving in Victoria. Hate it, hate it, hate it. And he cancelled the Commonwealth Games after bringing the state into the Commonwealth Games. Says, yeah, we're going to host the Commonwealth Games. And then he cancelled it. And I believed it cost, don't quote me on this, but I think it was $320 million that they just blew. You know, a third of a billion dollars. A third of a billion dollars, if it was 320 just gone, boof. <laughs> and then suddenly, at the top of his game, as he'd tell you, he just left. He goes, yeah, I'm out. See ya. <laughs> look, don't look at what they say. Look at what they do. If, you, if you're doing such a good job and you're so great at it, why would you just walk away? And, and in his farewell speech to himself, he's basically saying, we know in politics that when I think he said something along the lines of when you're when you're at the top of your game, that that's when you've got to leave. So he basically I interpreted it, him saying, I'm doing such a good job that, that now's the time to leave. And like, ugh, cringe. Clintrons, he says, get a big bear's flight. John D says, XRP is dead money. Lol, I made my mistake. Look, I hope it comes back, but it's all time high it was about three dollars fifty, and it's currently tra currently trading at fifty cents. Big Bear's Flight, there's a bear in there. Rob you, he says, did you just say to shelf the ledger? Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I did, Rob. I, I learned from I, at my gym. Uh, I learned shelving from the receptionist who worked there. She told me that she went to a party and shelved something to get into that rave party. And I said, what does shelving mean? And then this young lady at the gym in very graphic details, not holding back. It must be the new generation that she wasn't shy at all. She explained exactly what shelving was. So <laughs> uh, Steve J said, Adam, it's not encouraging to not hear a word of peace through mainstream media or sovereign leaders. You're being experienced in these scenarios. What comes first? A hundred K bit cat. Bit oh, good question. What comes first? A hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin or more war, more war. More, you'd have to scale it because like you could argue that more war is already here and it's just going to get bigger. Unfortunately, Steve, great question. More war. If you're talking world war, I don't know. I think 100K Bitcoin. I, I, if it was world war, I think 100K Bitcoin. But if it's more war, just any war, you're going to have more war before 100K Bitcoin. And we're talking US 100 Bitk. 100,000 US Bitcoin. Lex says hi from Manila. G'day, Lex. John D says Ledger is easier to show. <laughs> John D says Ledger is easier to shelf than Trezor because of its shape. Uh, yeah. Ledger's got more sharper edges. Trezor's more flat and wide. <laughs> oh, God. Wolf says speed cameras um, hidden. Sounds like Germany. Is, is that what they're doing over in Germany? And Taylor says, I have the Robert Green books. Love them. Uh, Robert Green is 
the so Robert Greene wrote a mastery. If he's got other books, I have to. I tell you what's good about mastery. They say if you want to be an entrepreneur, that you should read a lot of order, uh, a lot of biographies. And what's good about mastery is that it touches on so many successful people in so many different areas. And it's kind of like Robert Greene's done the work for us. It's kind of like he's gone. Here, here's all the um. Here's the success of a dancer and a scientist and a sportsman and a creator and a, like every field. And he's gone through all of, all of these biographies and he's taken the applicable bits and summarized it and given us basically a snapshot of all of these successful people and how it applies to their mastery in all these different areas. And I, I think that's the true art of the book, that it's taken so many different areas, so many different people from so many different skill sets and found what they had in common or found what their, their solution was to master what they were good at. Great recommendation, Attila. Wolf says, I think stupid people reflect it's less on themselves, so I'd say you're good. He's talking to Matthew Cooper. Wolf says, still, um, though, Curse of the High IQ is a must-read if you feel like most people are dumb and you cannot relate to them. Yeah, so great point there, Wolf. So Curse of the High IQ, we'll just go back to the book again. We've got to be dangerous. We've got to be careful that, that we're not saying, you know, we're superior to other people, which we're not. I'm just saying that if you sometimes feel like you can't relate, this book may help you. And it's very straightforward. It just tells you how it is. Neil Dennison, he goes, there's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Powerful. Absolutely. Attila says, I've read Robert Greene's books. Love them. Can't remember if that was me, lol, possibly. But thank you, sir. Let me know what you think of the books. I'll read more. Univorce says, I thought HR stands for human remains. <laughs> Steve J. He says, debate equates to knowledge. Knowledge equates to power. Power equates to earning capacity. And then they tax and inflate it away. Let's read that again. Steve, you need to write a book of quotes. I mean it, Steve. He says, debate equates to knowledge. Knowledge equates to power. Power equates to earning capacity. And then the tax... And then they tax and inflate it away. Yet the best analogy I can, or not analogy, fact, you're given a house from your parents and that house is in a good location and then they tax the crap out of it. It's like, what do you mean they tax it? I don't owe anything on it. Yes, you do. You owe rates. Rates, stamp, or stamp duty if you buy it. That's your first tax. But then your rates. And then they put keep putting up the rates and putting up the rates. And I've seen with my own eyes, people get beautiful houses and then they can't afford to pay for it. It's like, but you own the house. It's like, yeah, I've got to give the government money for a house that I own. BMA says, we love our Adam. Thank you, BMA. So very kind words out there. Look at that. Thank you. Donna. Donna says, I prefer in the morning. Cool. I'm not a morning person. But again, to the masses, Donna, my crypto sister, we love having you here. The majority of people are not up at four o'clock in the morning, but the majority of people are up at eight o'clock at night. Just saying, democracy. Ramsey, he says, I remember that story well. You were in Spain and your friend, oh yeah, your dad's, ah yes, thank you, the yacht story. Now I know what you're talking about. So we're talking about check what you pay for. He goes, your super yacht story from Spain. Remember the rich Irish fella and his family. Yes. Carlos Habibi says, I remember the yacht story. It was when you were hungry and refused the food. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. We all remember good stories. Quick refresher, when I was in Spain, rolled with a very rich family, had a super yacht. I went on that super yacht and every night we ported in a different harbour, harboured in a different port. English is fun. We parked our boat, we berthed it somewhere and then we'd go out for dinner and this guy was a millionaire, multi, multi, multi millionaire and we would have three course meals and five drinks each, no exaggeration, sometimes four or five course meals and six drinks each. And I don't mean six of the same drink. I mean like water, sparkling water, white wine, red wine, beer, coffee, and, and a shot, like a port or something at the end of it. Like all, just the drinks would have cost a fortune. But at the end of every menu, I won't say his name, but I, I nearly did. He would take the receipt and the receipt would be like over a meter long and he'd pull out his glasses and he'd pull out his pen and he would go down the entire receipt and check every single item and because i really looked up to this guy and i was 18 at the time and i was quite happy to ask questions because i was always curious 
especially rolling with a millionaire. I said, sir, don't take this the wrong way, but you've got so much money. Why do you always check the receipt at the end of the meal with such detail? And he said, I don't mind paying, but I demand I get what I pay for. And I've never forgotten that. And I apply that to everything I do in life. I don't mind paying top dollar, but I demand I get top service. I don't mind paying the bill, but I demand that I get everything that I've paid for. And if, as long as you adhere to that, you should be fine. It's also the it's also good to maintain your warranties. Like some people get embarrassed, like claiming their warranties. So I've got security cameras everywhere in my property. You, you can't sneeze on my property without being seen. And two of the cameras went, th th I just couldn't get them to work. They used to work. So I took them back to the provider and they're about a year old. And I said, look, they just won't work. And they said, yep, no problem. Bang, gave me $2,000 worth of new cameras straight away. And I'm like, oh, cool. Thank you so much. So never be afraid to pay for, or sorry, get the warranty that you paid for. Um, just be careful though, when you go to places like Harvey Norman and they try and sell you another warranty, you know, you buy something for $200 and then they sell you an extended warranty for another $200. Fun fact, I only know this from my master's when I was doing that as a case study. The business model wasn't actually the product. The business model was, in fact, the warranty. Think about that. So many of you can know what I'm talking about. Same with America. Think of Best Buy. Uh, Australia, think of Harvey Norman. England, I don't know what your equivalent is over there. I can't remember. But you go to a store, you buy, I don't know, a computer monitor. And it comes with a one-year warranty. And then they say, we'll extend the warranty to five years. And you pay the extra $500 for the five years, but you never use that warranty. The truth is the, the business is making more profits off the warranties than the product itself because most people lose the paperwork to the warranty or they forget that they've got the warranty or the product never breaks. So that's why they can win sort of three times there. They'll never remember they had the warranty or they'll remember, but they can't find the paperwork because they always do that. Have you got the receipt? Have you got the paperwork? Even though it's on the bloody system. Or the third one is it, the thing never breaks. So just be careful with the warranties. What I do now when it comes to cars, I haven't bought a car for a long time. Yeah. What rich people, hang on, what people who are good with their money typically do with the car, they buy a good car and then they run it into the ground. That's what most people who are very good with their money in. They get a good car and they're happy with the car, but they drive it and, and look after it until it's almost completely destroyed. Then they trade it in. As opposed to what people who are bad with their money Every two years, they, they get a new car, new car, new car. Because all you're doing is constantly paying depreciation. That's all you're doing. It, it's nuts. And so, yeah, but you've always got a reliable car. What I do is I get a car and I always get a good warranty on the car that I get. Whenever I get a car, I want a good warranty. And it happened with one of my cars. I had a Beamer and um, something went wrong with the engine and it cost $35,000. Admittedly, it's a performance car. $35,000 to fix the engine. And the engine didn't blow. A new engine itself was going to be like sixty thousand dollars. It's crazy, but they had to fix something in the head, and it was like thirty thirty five thousand dollars. I'm like, okay. And then they realised, oh shit, it's still under warranty. I'm like, yeah, it's under warranty. Fix it. And by the way, I want a courtesy car. Yep, yeah, okay. So I got a brand new, I think a, a five series, which is really nice. Brand new, which wasn't mine. It wasn't a performance five series, but it's still gorgeous and brand new and luxurious. And I'm driving someone else's brand new car whilst they're fixing my car. So I always get a good warranty on a car. For me, when I'm shopping for cars now, I'm actually shopping. Sure, I like the car, but I'm really shopping for the warranty. What's the warranty you're going to give me? And that's why when it comes to these cars that are doing seven-year unlimited kilometer warranties, that's hard to sneeze at. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal if you're doing seven years unlimited kilometers. Got to compete with that, cars. Wonder Woman, Adam, but we go surfing, running, fishing, walking the dogs at 4 a.m. We play before work. Yes, that's not me. And the majority don't Wonder Woman. Uh, Adam C, is Hex and Pulse chain still a thing? Yes, it is. Ram says, you all went to a restaurant and made... Oh, yes, yeah, we're, all, we're on the yacht story. You all went to a restaurant and he made sure that we got what he paid for. Yep. Uh, I'd love to come on your show, Mr. Cool, Finbear, I want you to write to me. And I'll send you the link for next week. Or do you want to come on Wednesday? We can do Wednesday night or Sunday night. Dan Wednesday. He says, the rich guy who owned the yacht and <laughs> took you for dinner. Your friend's father, if I remember correctly. Yes. Clintron says, just finished reading Meet Your Straw Man. Wow. I should check it out. 
Jay says, the Solariums and another tribe. That's right, the Solariums, or as Wonder Woman calls them, the Sultanas. Wade Matthews says, didn't know I was going to stir up my Queensland brothers and sisters. <laughs> I work in the sun all day and any break to reduce it would be great. Adam C says, it's weird how everyone is going for a booster jab at the moment. And I am starting to get a sore throat and slight head cold. Coincidence? I think not. That's powerful, Adam. People are going for a booster jab and you're getting sick from their booster jab. Got to be careful what I say. Hexatoshi, he says, uh, snuck in again and I will skip back for a sober Adam at 1.5 speed. There's the banter. Am I really speaking that slow? I'm trying to speak as quickly as possible. Paul Young, he says, did I miss why Coinly is out of f favor? Yes, you did. Go back and hear it again. Attila Basai says, easy, more war. Craig Patton says, will I void my warranty if I... <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> hang on let me take a sip i love it craig that's a good one will i void my warranty if i shelf my ledger <laughs> get, get, hey troy our agent in the field troy cannon we got a homework assignment <laughs> we got a homework assignment for you troy we need you to find out for our crypto brother craig <laughs> if we shelf our ledger <laughs> Will it void the warranty? Carlos will be cracking up. Oh, that's uh, Finn Bear says you mean prison pocket. <laughs> uh, BMA says I like green books. Uh, John Green's book, Robert Green's books. God, I'm getting delirious here. Rob, you he says, I suppose a ledger <laughs> filled with Bitcoin would give you a similar sense of euphoria. Glad we clarified that. Oh, we love the banter. God, we have some fun, don't we, kids? Finn Bear, remember to read the curse of the high IQ in public places. No, don't do that. Oh, actually, I listen to my books as audiobooks, obviously. But if you read The Curse of the High IQ in public places, are you saying because everyone look at the cover or you'll actually see what what is what Aaron's referring to around you? Be a mate. To really understand them, you have to read them a lot of times. Yeah, for those books, I agree. Uh, Matthew Kirby says, big and dramatic world events appear to be in, to, appear to open the gates to usher in changes. Yes. One thing that I'm observing is that over the years, it feels like the gaps between events are getting shorter. Or is it just me? Matthew Cooper. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the gaps between events are becoming shorter. So if you look at my interview with, and I've done many with him, really smart guy, super smart guy um, from the, the standard, um, Josh Shigala. We talk about how um, Putin cured COVID. Now, you might say, oh, well, don't be stupid. No, look at the timeline. You, you literally went from global lockdown to war in Ukraine. Like, how do you time that so perfectly? What, what are the odds that it would go from one day we are locked down because of the Coco Roro, and then the next day you've got a war in Ukraine? And Josh Gallagher and I have a bit of a joke saying, man, couldn't you just give us one summer? Couldn't you just have, couldn't we just have one summer where there wasn't a pandemic or a war? No. Nah. And now, you know, Ukraine and Russia's kind of stalemate. Well, it's not. I've done my synopsis on that. And my synopsis, you can go back to my video when the, the war kicked off and it's playing out exactly as I said it. And one person wrote said, Adam, you need to stick to um, crypto because you're, your geopolitics or your understanding of war is completely wrong. Well, the proof is in the pudding. Look at my analysis of the war in Ukraine. It's all on video. I did it a year ago and I said, this is what's going to happen. And that's exactly what's happened. And just as it's died out now, you've got the Middle East kicking off. And I, it's a great observation, Matthew. I would actually say that there appears to be no gaps anymore. It's just one thing. And now, 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 my friend, it's overlapping. Because think about it, it went from Ro Ro, the Coco Ro Ro, to Ukraine. And now it's like it's overlapping. Ukraine's still going, and then bang, we've got the Middle East. Now, is it coordinated? Is it a is it um chance of coincidence? Don't know. Adam C says, Can you do a backflip? I can into water comfortably. I've done one for a while. I tell you what I can also do is uh, you run off those little mini tramps and do a forward flip and do that and land on my feet. No problem. 
Oh, it has been a while though. Beer May says, I know a great brother here in San Diego. I really like your barber story from California. Oh, barber, not brother. I, I know a great barber here in San Diego. I really like your barber story from California. You know what's funny? A lot of people like that barber story from last week. I wasn't sure I should share it. I don't know. But everyone's like, hey, that was a great story. I'm like, <laughs> what, what bit was good? Was it just the whole thing? Interesting. It's funny. Sometimes you say something, you think, yeah, that's really good. And you get no response. Other times you say something and it's like, no one's going to care. And I was like, yeah, that was the best story ever. And I'm very impressed that many of you remember my yacht story. Stories are very powerful. Hunter says, England, our equivalent is Curry's, right? So we're talking about not Harvey Norman, not Best Buy. Is that what it's really called? Curry's. Interesting. Attila, he says, Adam, are you buying any FTs that TMI has suggested? NFTs are dead for now, so may not be a bad idea. You just got to know what you're looking for and what you're buying. No, the truth is I'm not buying any NFTs. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying it's just too risky. There's too many. It's not that you can't make money off them. It's just that it's, I, I'm a numbers guy. Statistically, you're not going to make money off them. Someone is. Someone's going to win the lotto. Someone's going to get the Bitcoin when it was 10 cents. Someone's mined heaps of it and it's on their computer, but the majority didn't get 10 cent Bitcoin and the majority aren't going to make money on NFTs. Adam, I get a new car every five years. Cool. Uh, but what if there's nothing wrong with it, Adam? Do you still get a new car if there's nothing wrong with it? Dan Wednesday says, BMW lift default, probably. The famous BMW ticking sound, expensive to fix for sure. Yeah, I, I actually think it was the the valve seals as well. Does that sound right? Clintrons. My first job back in the day was working at Dick Smith. They cared more about us selling the warranty than the product. There you go. That's where the money is. There's, there's more money in a piece of paper than in the product itself. Does everyone think about cash converters in Australia? In Australia, we have like a pawn shop chain, not porn, but pawn. <laughs> P-A-W-N. Oh, you're not going to go there. Shelf stuff, kids. They had shelves full of stuff. God, this is terrible. And you would go in there and you'd say, right, you know, I need money. So you'd take in a TV and they'd give you $10 for it. And then you'd, they'd sell it for $100. And people say, oh, that's rough off. No, that was a fair deal because it's junk. And they had to store this junk. And then they had to take the risk of selling that junk. And sometimes the junk was stolen. So you buy some, they buy it off you for $10 and then they sell it for a hundred. That's fine. You know, they've got the store, they've got staff, they've got the shelves, they've got the electricity, they've got the cleaning, they've got the compliance, they've got the tax. So I had no issue with that. But what cash converters realized, it's like, well, hang on a second. Why do we bother with the products? And then they caught on to what uncle Adams always said, the money is in the money. So instead of dealing with old dusty TVs and secondhand guitars and drum kits and random stuff and jewelry was another one how about we just do payday loans why don't we just loan out money with a high interest rate and that's what's happened to cash converters it's still got the name cash converters but if you go to the cash converters stores now they're not they don't have tvs and guitars it's just a, a counter and you go in there and it's for essentially for poor people because poor people are in the situation where it's like yeah i'll get a loan out for 50 percent calculated daily compounding monthly it's insane. And so they get a loan for $100 and end up paying back $5,000. No exaggeration. And that's because the money is in the money. And as Clintrons has talked about, or just pointed out, the warranty is, it's not the TV, it's not the product. It's, it's a financial product. And that financial product is a warranty. We will financially cover the cost of this product if you pay for it. It's like an insurance company. Think of an insurance company. A, a, an extended warranty is no different to an insurance company. Finbear, Wednesday might work. Kids are at school. Then the streaming time is a bit later than today. Uh, sometimes. We'll, we'll talk offline, Finbear. Attila, one of my work colleagues keeps going to get a booster. And can, coincidentally, he always ends up getting sick right after. Ends up missing days of work. Yeah. Talk about a booster. I walked in <clears throat> to this guy's office a while ago and I thought he was dying. Like I saw, I walked into his office and I won't say his name, but it was like John. It wasn't John. I'm like, John, what the hell's wrong with you? And he goes, Oh, I'm all right. And I said, What's wrong? And he goes, Oh, I just got my fourth booster. <laughs> just got his fourth booster. He literally looked like he was about to die. And I'm like, 
man, do you need to go to the hospital? And he's like, oh, I think so. And I'm like, all right, keep pumping it in. And I saw him you know, like a few months later and, and jokingly, like he doesn't know what we talk about. And I said, so John, you're going to get your fifth booth booster. And he goes, yeah, I'm going in tomorrow actually. And <laughs> they just don't learn. Curse of the high IQ, curse of the low IQ. Troy, as long as you keep it dry, we talk about ledger, you'll be fine. Just put it in a plastic bag and go your hardest. <laughs> Finn Bear, my favorite book to read in public, how to live with a huge I won't say it. Clintron's, the gaps between the events are directly proportional to the population's attention span. Powerful. Neil Dennison, book recommendations, How We Invented Freedom and Why It Matters, written by Daniel Hannon, was a pro-Brexit member of parliament. Uh, I think what a map is. Now a member of the House of Lords, essential reading if you have, if you live in the Anglosphere. That is uh, how freedom What's it called? How We Invented Freedom and Why It Matters. Hunter says, yes, Curry's PC World. That may have been a place called Dixon's, depending on where you last visited the UK. Interesting. Adam, see, he says, yeah, because I don't want to get the $35,000 bill for the engine lol. Yep. Julie Maltezos says, we love all your stories. Thank you, Julie. You're the star of the show tonight. Thank you, Julie. I wish I could reverse super chat you. Adam C., Plus, to be honest, I really enjoy cars. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I understand. So, Adam, you're saying that you don't want the thirty-five thousand dollars for the engine, and that's why you get one every five years. Yeah, I get it. And you know what else? To be fair, Adam, is the safety. When you get a new car, you've got new brakes, new tires, new suspension, new airbags, new everything. So, mm, I get it. Academicated. About time you got here. It says morning, my fellow hexagons. He gives me a little winky there. Hemi Raw. I just had a quick look at the market when the pandemic hit. The pandemic made 100k AU Bitcoin. So war or a pandemic. Well done, Hemi Raw. Thank you for the research from our agent in the field. So when the pandemic hit, hit yeah, the Bitcoin pumped. It's a little bit different because remember, we got a lot of stimmy che checks and, and an argument, and I don't know, but an argument is because everyone was at home and had nothing to do and everyone was on the internet and they were getting stimmy checks and they weren't going on holidays and they weren't buying cars and they weren't going out to restaurants. You had a very weird time in the world where everyone was at home. Lots of money was coming in, keeping all things consistent as in your stimmy checks were coming in or the government was still paying you. You weren't going on holidays. You had your expenses essentially dropped. And then you had the internet, like everyone's just like, well, what do I do? I look at the internet. And it's like, yeah, buy Bitcoin. Bang, all this money went into the Bitcoin. So that's part of the reason why it went up. Steve J, Adam, did you have a think about the question I asked? Yes, I did. I'm out of time to talk about it now. It says, and I was thinking about what I was, I know what I was doing. I was mowing the spare block next to my house. You're talking about Western countries, people Ponzi due to aging populations and huge job vacancy. Will war exasperate, exasperate the situation? Essentially, are we now in a people Ponzi scheme? Attila, one, NFTs I'm not buying because I don't know enough. I'll stick with DCA and crypto. Good good move, I think. Was just curious. Two, on I don't know if it's true, but reading and seeing some news about how Ukrainians are forcibly conscripting females and only Ukraine, Ukrainian in the army who refuses to fight. And any Ukrainian in the army hang on and any ukrainian in the army who refuses to fight are executed by the azov battalion wow now before we think we're better than this in in the first world war and second world war from memory i don't know it wasn't there but certainly the history books show it when they said charge and go over the trenches all the men yes that were only men conscripted men had to go up over the trenches and run into a hail of bullets and any men who didn't go the sergeant or officer walked along the trench line and just executed them on the spot. Just shot them dead on the spot. So oppressed. Hang on, so privileged. These privileged men go to war or we'll put you in jail and then go over this trench and run into a hail of bullets or we'll put a bullet in your head. Academic aid. Uh, it's a twice a year cyclical detox. Nothing more. Let nature do its thing. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Powerful words. Neil Dennison, three years ago, there was a get the jab ad on Israel TV featuring a five-year-old boy. The other day, he died of a heart attack. He was eight years old. Wow, really? Three years ago, there was a get the jab ad on Israeli TV 
featuring a five-year-old boy. The other day, he died of a heart attack. He was eight years old. Man. Finbear. Academic aided. Good day, mister. Andre Alcaza. Hi. I've just made it through all the comments. We're at the two-hour mark. It's worked out perfectly. Looking at the heat map, Bitcoin is currently at $27,909. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. The book of the week is The Curse of the High IQ. The biggest gainer was Trust Wallet. The biggest loser. Hang on. Biggest gainer, Trust Wallet. Biggest loser, Radix. The Dark Horse is Chainlink. Um, and the debt, oh God, is 33.513 trillion US dollars. Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, head over to the crypto.land. That's www.thecrypto.land, where you can do everything crypto safely on one simple and secure site. What was my homework again? Find a trust wallet and put it in place of Coinly. Steve J says, thanks to Adam and Hexikins. Great stream. I had good fun tonight. Great stream. Adam says, Hemi Raw. Thank you so much. Dan Wednesday says, thanks, Adam. Legend. Great stream. Don't forget to hit that like button. It, does, it really helps. You hit that like button. I don't know why the, well, it's obvious why the YouTube algorithm gods love it, but I, I don't know why people don't, more people don't hit it. Just tap the button. Tappity, tappity, tap. Bless my saliva says, thanks again, Adam. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Jay says thanks, and I'll talk to you next time.